Transportation Licensing Commission, if you'll please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Pursuant to the provisions of Section 2.68.030 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws, notice is hereby given that if you're not satisfied with the decision made by the Metropolitan Transportation Licensing Commission, you may appeal the decision by petitioning for a writ of certiorari with the Davidson County Chancery or Circuit Court. Your appeal must be filed within 60 days of the date of the entry of the Metropolitan Transportation Licensing Commission's decision. We advise that you seek your own independent legal advice to ensure that your appeal is filed in a timely manner and that all procedural requirements have been met. Uh, Mr. Fields uh, tells me we've got two more commissioners arriving a few minutes late, but the beginning part of our agenda does not require a quorum, and because we're under a time constraint today, I decided to go ahead and start the meeting. Um, we're now uh, uh, going to have our public comment period, and I've received a few requests to, uh, to speak. Are these, um, are there any uh, items that need to be discussed that were turned in for this portion of the agenda, Mr. Fields? Okay. And then, um, We'll skip over approval of the prior meeting's minutes for now, but we do have a Connect downtown update as well. Mr. Fields? Uh, yes, Mr. Commissioner, uh, we have a Connect downtown update from Marty Sewell at NDOT. It's going to give us a brief uh, update on how that study's going. Thank you, Ricky. Good afternoon. That happened a little faster than I <laughs> realized. <laughs> But um, thank you for the opportunity to, to share this um, update with you today. Again, I'm Marty Sewell with, uh, with NDOT and the, I manage the planning division. And I'm just gonna give you a, show a couple of slides here today. I don't have any real new information other than schedule wise, but that has evolved over time as, as you've watched as we've given these presentations over the last couple of years. So I wanted to just give you insight into, into that. If you go ahead and yeah. And just a reminder that we're working with multiple agencies on this, on this project. To, um, to define what the needs are in downtown and re creating recommendations for projects that can address those needs. And the schedule, um, this is the most recent update of the schedule. And over time, of course, this has evolved. We've, um, due to the nature of the, some of the issues we were dealing with and some of the outreach that was necessary, we did need to expand our outreach efforts and engagement with businesses and with merchants. Um, in the downtown area and residents and everyone else um, in order to make sure everyone was aware of what was going on and then we would have their be able to contact them here in the next phase of engagement which we're about to start um, if you go on to the next one this is just a reminder of the themes that are involved here that we're, we're talking about addressing these major major concerns the whether it's the curbside or speeding up transit service or making it safer for bikes and pedestrians in downtown, in addition to overall improving congestion. So that we're looking at lots of these recommendations right now. We're, we're costing them. We're prioritizing where in a phasing um, plan, the 10-year phasing plan they should go, whether it's the first couple of years, the middle, or toward the end, um, how we would you know, work to incorporate all of those into our work programs, in other words. So if you go on to the next. So this is what we're planning to do this fall, and actually in, in, in very short time, we're, like I said, we're finalizing the recommendations and there's a recommendations report that will come out toward the end of October and that will go to the public. There'll be a multiple week public review period where we'll collect comments. That's going to include a couple of public open house meetings and a, a few more touch points with some of the key stakeholders that have been involved up until this point to explain what the recommendations mean and how they might impact them. But at that point, we would we would make those final changes and then um, come back with the final report um, to, to deliver. So some of the things that, uh, just a, a list of some of the activities that we'll be doing um, over the next couple of months. Um, you had it right there, that last one. 
Yeah, and just, uh, um, I think I just mentioned, went through all of these um, as I was discussing it, but again, just to show you in that list form, but that's the information I wanted to share today, and I'm happy to answer or address any questions or concerns that you might have um, this afternoon. I, that, I think we would brief you as often as you'd like. Um, we'd be happy to. It would be lovely to see a presentation of whatever you're going to share with them. Mm -hmm. I think should come to us as well. Mm -hmm. We could probably arrange that for next meeting. Yeah, it would be meeting at public meeting. Okay, sure. Just one or additional we... question. Was, uh, was there any major changes to the overall <coughs> timeline? deliverables to deliver yeah. no um, we are still looking at that at being a I mean obviously it starts <laughs> when we finish I guess that's where the 10-year um, window for for providing that those improvements would start but but no most what we're having to do is just balance what's achievable you know in those first three years versus this middle three getting design started on some projects in the first three you know being able to construct some of the low-hanging fruit addressing some of the technology needs that are being addressed right now, um, getting some of that in place before we you know, move on to some of the bigger projects. But we should, people in downtown should start seeing a difference with all of the different improvements that are underway right now and pretty soon. Well, thank you very much. All right, thank you. All right, next item on the agenda, we have a bird spin SUMD update. Thank you, Chair. Members of the board, forgive me, I got caught in the rainstorm there. Um, so I'm Sam Reed representing Bird. Uh, Tim Wilcox, I think he's in the back there with Spin. Um, you all may have seen the, the recent news that um, Bird purchased uh, Spin last week. Um, we've spoken to the director about it. We've spoken with the staff and some of the membership here, but wanted the benefit uh, of the board just to understand kind of what that means and in this case really what it doesn't mean. Um, so SPIN is going to remain uh, an independent entity that's wholly owned by BIRD. Um, so, you know, in terms of day-to-day -day operations, permits, licenses, uh, they will not be affected by the ownership change, uh, at least until, you know, through the end of the, our, our remaining term. Um, from what you'll see on the ground, right, I mean, uh, I think w what we see is that uh, as a customer of scooters, you tend to be loyal to one brand or another. Um, Spin will continue to operate uh, uh, same service, uh, using the same scooters, same app, and of course the, the same quality of, of service that uh, the city and our riders are used to. That includes all the sort of same commitments that we've made to the city uh, on, on Spin's behalf and on Bird's behalf, um, including equity, equitable deployments and our parking commitments. Jobs, jobs will all remain the same. Um, I'm your contact for Bird. Tim will remain the contact for Spin, uh, and Spin, uh, like I said, remains its own independent entity. Uh, we, we we sort of anticipated that consolidation would happen in this space. If you recall, those of you who've been here a long time, we at one point had as many as eight, ten providers in the market, um, and you've sort of seen a lot of the smaller players fall aside. And we think that um, consolidation in this case is good, allows us to deliver a continuer to deliver high uh, cutting edge technology and better access to equity programs, um, commitments on local jobs, all that sort of thing. So just wanted to make sure that you all in the public were aware, no changes, um, but uh, as a result of the acquisition, we want to make sure you all knew that it, it had occurred. Happy to answer any questions if you got them. One question. Yes, sir. What's, is there any difference in the technology between the Bird and the Spin scooters? Battery, speed, uh, reliability, wheels. There, um, there are certainly some differences. I'll probably have to go. Uh, I did. I did not come prepared to answer that question today, but um, be happy to provide you with more information. I know, Tim, you you have any more <laughs> intel on that? It's been a while since I've been on a spin. I have to admit. Well, uh, they are two completely separate scooter models. Um, as of the size of the wheels, I believe that Spin, their new model is a, a larger. Um, they, I don't know if Bird has swappable batteries yet. Spin still will continue to use swappable batteries. Same orange scooter, and Bird will still use the same silver scooter. But they're completely different um, scooter models. 
similar horsepower moving a large person up a hill? Yes, same as Lime as well. All three companies have the same um, like horsepower and kind of those same specs and Got speed it. restrictions as well. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Same geofencing capability? Spins might be a little better, but all right. yeah, no, it's, it's all the same. It's all the same. Let's not get into that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, commissioners. We would, uh, uh, any news on e-bikes, because we've got a minute or two for the next commit, because we, we are waiting for one more commissioner. Any updates on e-bikes? And, and anecdotally, how how you feel the deployment's going in the in the operations area and that sort of thing? Yeah, I mean, I think we would say that the, the pilot program is going really well. I think f from our perspective, you know, to get more bikes out um, and to make the pilot program even, even more successful, we'd just love to open up the pilot area even more to other areas. I think, you know, with some sort of, change in leadership of the city and new council members, that sort of thing. I think we're l looking forward to revisiting some of those conversations about expanding the footprint. I did. Thank you, Chair. Um, if you don't mind, could you um, confirm for me, I think I heard this, that um, SPIN will continue to be a legal entity existing in its own right? Yes, so it's the same. Spin was acquired 18 months ago by a company called Tier. It's the same exact process. We were now just acquired by Bird. Yeah, it's a Skinny Labs is the name of the entity. Happy to answer any more questions offline as well. But thank you all for your time today. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, um, Mr. Fields and Mr. Rooker, there's also some items on the consent agenda. Do we need a quorum to cover those issues as well? All right. I mean, I think probably that wouldn't quite be the right way to do it because, like, if the people who are not in the room didn't hear them announced, then they don't really know what they're voting on, so... All right, so we're going to break until we get uh, our next commissioner. Uh, I'm told we only need one, so great. We'll, we'll begin here in two or three minutes. Thank you. Four, three, two, one. Thank you for your patience, everyone, um, while we waited to get quorum. Um, so we'll begin again. Um, Prior to today's meeting, uh, the director circulated for um, review the minutes from our prior meeting in July. Have the commissioners had a chance to review those minutes? Is there a motion regarding approval? A motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. We've got uh, two public hearings today. The first is our annual meeting for the purposes of consideration of applications for certificates of public convenience and necessity for new uh, or additional low-speed vehicles. We've got an application from Vintage Nashville, Nashville Tour. Uh, Mr. Fields, Mr. Rooker. Uh, yes, sir. yes, sir. They have applied for a new application applying for 20 new permits. Uh, currently, we have 38. Um, low-speed vehicles, and uh, they have applied for 20, 20 new permits. All right. And um, we've received several requests to speak. Now, mind you, we have two public hearings today. One is for the low-speed vehicles, and the other hearing is for additional pedal vehicles. Um, the requests to speak I have before me don't necessarily differentiate. So if you're only speaking to one of the types just reserve your um, your time until we get to the uh, pedal vehicles. Uh, so I will call on you if you're speaking as to low-speed vehicles. Please come forward. Uh, Lisa LeClure. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. 
Uh, my name is Lisa LeClaire, and I reside at 606 Maplewood Lane. Um, I'm speaking um, really on both issues of slow-moving vehicles and additional pedal vehicles. I think I've got that all yes. right. Um, and uh, I guess my comment would be that um, we're still in the middle of this Connect Downtown study, and so we don't have all the data yet of how many vehicles ought to be uh, on the roads in the in the streets of downtown Nashville, in and around downtown, and many of these vehicles um, do drive in that area, and so it just seems to me it wouldn't be the appropriate time to add any vehicles to what we already have approved, and that's my only comment. I'm speaking on behalf of the Greater Nashville Hospitality Association. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Jeanette Barker. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Uh, Jeanette Barker at 2629 South Highlands Drive, and today I'm speaking on behalf of the Nashville Downtown Partnership. We're the unified voice for downtown residents, businesses, visitors, and, um, and investors, and, and business owners. Um, we're here today also to urge that, um, on, that this commission not approve any of the additional permits for either slow moving vehicles or pedal, pedal vehicles being requested today. Um, on the agenda, that's a total of 32 additional slow moving vehicles that could potentially be approved and added to the streets. Um, and we believe that to further increase the number of uh, of any sl slow moving vehicles prior to release of the final downtown connect study would be inappropriate. We know and we heard a couple months ago from NDOT and the KCI technologies preliminary reporting that we saw a clear exponentially severe impact for each additional slow moving moving vehicle once it went beyond that tipping point of about 40. And so in our eyes, this gives two credible reasons against approval today. One, preliminary but incomplete data shows that there's a problem with each additional vehicle added. Uh, and two, we don't have the comprehensive data yet. Um, and I think everyone hopefully agrees that data-driven decisions to the extent that they're possible are a wise thing. And um, I've personally been thinking about what would it look like if any other industry or even an area of government were to make decisions like this without data when it might be available? And I think that that doesn't quite land well on most people's ears. Um, so again, representing 17,000 downtown residents, 78,000 employees, and uh, pretty much 14 million visitors um, in the downtown, we hope that you will consider these folks um, and realize that I think we all believe that approving additional slow-moving vehicles would be a, a hardship. Thanks for your consideration. Thank you. Rady Cannon. Um, thank you, Mr. Fields and commissioners for the opportunity to share with you all today. Again, I'm, my name is Brady Cannon, representing the Nashville Convention of Visitors Corp. I'm also going to be speaking uh, to the pedicabs and the slow-moving vehicles. As um, leading advocates for visitors in the hospitality industry, we feel that the issues of disruption in the downtown core still remain. While we have seen some initial improvement over the last year and we're encouraged by the work that NDOT has been doing, um, safety issues resulting from the overwhelming traffic congestion and noise pollution are still a major concern. And there's still work to be done to get the current level of operations that we're seeing on our streets today under control. We continue to receive complaints um, about downtown's chaotic atmosphere, much of which concerns slow-moving vehicles, ETVs, uh, pedicabs, and their customers' behavior. Um, downtown is an immensely diverse part of Nashville's community shared by residents, visitors, and businesses, and we must have a common-sense approach um, that affords everyone the ability to use downtown for their own needs. We ask this commission to not issue any additional uh, permits today for slow-moving vehicles, pedicabs, um, and especially not without first reviewing the completion of NDOT's Connect Downtown study. Um, it's not lost on us the amount of time and energy you all have put into this. Um, so we thank you for that and, uh, and continue working on this, uh, coming up with a solution. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cannon. Uh, the, the rest of the uh, requests to speak I have in front of me all state they pertain to pedicabs, so I'll hold those until we get to that meeting. Is there anyone else? They would like to speak to the issue of low speed vehicles. 
All right. Uh, is there anyone here on behalf of Vintage Nashville Tour? All right. <clears throat> Good afternoon. Yes, I just heard the gentleman about like how much is crowded downtown and he doesn't want any permit, but uh, it's like a tourist area. It's attract all the tourists and uh, our concept I inspired from Vienna. It's a uh, vintage course, same like the golf court, like uh, when it comes to characteristics, but it's more attractive for the family. Uh, it has much better space. It's eco-friendly. It's work with battery, no gas. Uh, it's uh, totally safe and secured. Uh, so uh, I'm re representing uh, this uh, company uh, to tell you, like, we, we need uh, such such thing for uh, before uh, downtown to attract more uh, tourists. And as I see, uh, Nashville keep growing, and a lot of tourists coming. And the, the transportation system in downtown it's kind of weak. There is no much uh, things to do except you go either bus either bus tour, which is like uh, something uh, classic. It's not like a new idea. Uh, we are out of the box doing something totally different from whatever is existing right now. So uh, I think we, we might need a chance to prove that it, this can uh, be kind of a, a top 10 uh, attractive things for uh, Nashville and make it something like uh, different, like unique. So uh, if you are, uh, if you need more, um, how to say, like, uh, um, specific things about the business. You can ask me any question you want. How fast do these vehicles go? It's same speed with the golf carts. So uh, when it comes to the, uh, sp uh, like, characteristics, it's same like golf carts. It's just the shape. It's different. It's, uh, you know, we are in historical places. You want to be, you want to feel like the historical, like, vibes with, with, with such a cars. And uh, basically, all the tourists, they came here for pictures. Like, you want to take pictures as a memory for, like, Broadway or whatever. And this is going to be, like, something memorable for any family or any group. It's uh, fun, safe, no alcohol, nothing. What is your proposed route that you plan to, to, uh, to do? Because you're saying it's, you know, historical tour. So explain to me kind of where it would go. Uh, the historical tour. So uh, our plan is we're gonna start like from the printer alley as as it's like the the symbol of historical uh, area in downtown, and we're gonna go to the like the famous uh, locations in downtown, which all the all the tourists that wanna visit. So we're gonna give them a break of like ten minutes to to go around, maybe take pictures, drink some water, whatever. And uh, we have excursions with the uh, local people who I know the area properly, and they can give them a good, uh, good experience to, the, to our guests. You mentioned Printer's Alley. So where would these uh, cars uh, park during the 15-minute break? So, so far, we are, we are like a, a partner with the SP Plus company, the parking lot. So uh, all our cars will be located in the, in the parking lot of SP Plus. So they started, they started from the, the, the trip, they're going to be from the uh, church and 3rd Avenue okay. and uh, uh, in the parking lot of the SP Plus, uh, which you were already like, we are under contract with them. So uh, it's going to start from there and ending there, like same point of start, same point of ending. And there is some breaks, as I told you, like uh, in each uh, plan we have, we're going to give them 10 minutes. Uh, and we are thinking maybe to uh, improve it with uh, um, f like free drinks, free like uh, uh, some kind of uh, attractive things to the, to, to the customer. And also some uh, videos uh, and pictures which they don't need to bring them home or we're going to give them something professional so they can carry it, carry with them. Okay. Thank you. Any additional questions? Thank you very much. You're welcome, sir. Oh, I'm sorry. sorry. Yes, sir. Do we... Do we know, um, Mr. Fields, uh, if these vehicles meet the definition of golf carts under TCA 55-1-123? We believe, based on the <coughs> um, specifications that were provided by the, uh, by the applicant, that they would meet the definition of a, of a uh, low-speed vehicle under the law. Not necessarily a golf cart, because there's, you know, there's three different sections. There's the golf carts, there's low speed, and there's medium speed. 
So, but, but the, so the golf cart is the 20 mile an hour. The low speed is under 49 CFR 571 500. If I may, um, the low speed vehicle definition in the Tennessee code annotated, mm -hmm. which uh, what we tend to refer to as the golf carts are really low speed vehicles. Um, says low speed vehicle means any four wheeled electric or gasoline vehicle excluding golf carts and they don't mean excluding things that look like golf carts there there's a separate definition in 123 for golf carts as you say whose top speed is greater than 20 miles per hour but not greater than 25 miles per hour including neighborhood electric vehicles low speed vehicles must comply with the standards in 49 CFR 571.500 that was, so do they com do they have VIN numbers? Do they comply? Yes, yes, sir. Uh, even even for the for these cars, we can customize them even lower than twenty miles per hour. It can be customized the way we want it. But do they have a VIN? Like, do, do you <coughs> own any of these vehicles today? I can't because it's very big money. If I don't have the permit, I cannot invest. And so you. To, to be able to apply, do you have to own the vehicle, have to show proof of insurance? So like there's a, there's a quote here for insurance that's black car insurance. This isn't a black car and there's no proof of insurance. There's a quote for insurance. There's not a vehicle owned, there's not a driver listed. issue a license, there had to be a vehicle and a proof of insurance and a driver listed. Am I wrong on that? Historically, the commission has allowed, uh, due to the cost of, of purchase, uh, if they could show a, uh, a purchase order, a you know letter of intent, uh, proof that they could buy them, the same way with the insurance. The, and then what would happen is if the commission were to approve it, even the commission approving it, we would not issue it from the office until everything was met. Mm -hmm. So then they would be reviewed, and if they didn't meet, we would come back to the commission and say what's been presented will not meet the standard. But again, from a specification standpoint, it appears they do. But there's not a you know number 11 attached to list of drivers. There's no list of drivers. There's no list of vehicles. There's just a picture of a vehicle that hadn't even. Is, are there any in America right now? Uh, as I told you, this is big money. We, we cannot invest it unless we get the approved to, to ship it. We are, are there any of these vehicles anywhere else? They, don't, in they don't exist over here. That's why. So that's why I'm saying it's a unique idea and we have to uh, bring it from out of the country. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to come straight from the factory. But nobody, I guess my question is, nobody else is operating these vehicles no anywhere one. else no one. in North America. No one. Does the windshield meet the specifications under, under, uh, was it CFR? I'm sorry, hang on, I navigated away. Right. 49 CFR, CFR. 571.5. Yeah, it requires, I mean, just a whole bunch of. <laughs> okay, that's good. At least existing here. Mm. <laughs> and Mr. Hayes, that Vintage Tour did submit a list of drivers that would be just not the twenty for the twenty no, vehicles. Not twenty, three. They listed three. Without a driver's license on <laughs> one of them. But yeah, I mean just I, I'm, I'm really curious, like, it's a vehicle that hasn't been in Nashville, that hasn't really been widely used in North America. It's a, it's a cool concept. Um, does it meet all the requirements? Have you validated that it meets all the requirements under the law to even be permitted in the first place? Again, in specifications, we, we can look at a sheet of paper to determine specifications. In terms of a hands-on inspection, we've not been able to do that. And, and also, kind of as a preliminary question, we need to, for the public hearing, we need to decide, is there a need for additional permits? And then if the answer is no, then um, sort of moot to even consider the application. If the answer is yes, then we can consider the application mm -hmm. specifically for vintage tours, well, vintage once, national tours. Once you end your public hearing and you begin your discussion, obviously it's a two-step two, two step 
conversation that I'm sure Ms. Castellanos will explain. Right. We can, we can, for example, get one car, bring it over here, and you can inspect it. And then you can see if it works according to what you need. But uh, the cart, it's basically the same as a golf cart, uh, but uh, the design is a vintage design. So same modifications, uh, speed that doesn't exceed 25, no less than 20. Uh, it's going to be the same exact, but this... Uh, uh, the body. The, the body, uh, it's a vintage. So uh, there is no be issue with uh, modifications of the vehicle to be on the streets. There would be no issue. With respect it's to, requirements. sorry to interrupt you, um, I apologize, do you want to continue? Uh, no, I'm saying that as long as it meets the requirements as a regular golf cart, there shouldn't be, I see, an issue. Do, do, you, do you want to present at all on the issue of why there may be a need for additional permits to be issued this year? Can I answer for that? Yes. Uh, as I told you, we, we are target the tourists mostly and the tourists they want to have special experience if if you're going to give them the same thing all the time they are not go, going to go for it so this is something new and never been in nashville this is the whole point so whatever i i want to invest in any business i would like to go in something never been happy before so and that, that was and that was my question as well um it was you know can you speak to the demand for this type of experience and specifically I'm also thinking in terms of need and addressing that question you know in terms of the route that you're going to use kind of what is available to visit those locations currently where is the need for additional vehicles to service the population that would be visiting those locations and can you kind of give us some information on that from your perspective as we evaluate this? Yes, sir. From my perspective, I, I think the, there is a big numbers of tourists and it keep growing. So there is always need for uh, anything has related to transportation. Because people, they want to do both together. They want to go with like kind of transportation that uh, they pay it. And they also, they want to have excursions. And they're going to go, they want to have also a memory with like videos, they want to post in Instagram or they want to post in Facebook and it's all for our benefit and for the city benefit because that's going to promote the city more. Like it's something like going to bring more at attention to the, to the city. Thank you very much. Thanks, sir. Is there anyone else who would like to speak to the issue of um, the consideration for the um, additional certificates of public convenience and necessity for low-speed vehicles. At this point in time, we'll close the public hearing um, of our annual meeting for um, consideration of additional certificates of public convenience and necessity for additional low-speed vehicles. Thank you. Mr. Fields, how many uh, permits are in existence presently? There are 38. 38? 38. Yeah, you verified that very well. Do we know if all 38 are being used? It'd be impossible for me to say if they're all being used, not being used. They're all permitted and available uh, under Joyride. So there are certainly 38 that could go uh, on any given uh, moment because they are all permitted and licensed. One company closed two years ago. They had several and uh, chose to go out of business. Yes. How many operators own the, have that 38 vehicle? Just one. Just one. Just one. one, one Joyride right. is the Joyride. sole operator of low speed vehicles. We had one or two of the companies and they both went out of business, have closed. And just for a bit of context, as I'm a newer commissioner, why do we not consider this when we consider the ETVs and other uh, permitting? The section of law this is covered under 673. Uh, the entertainment transportation is 677. They're two separate things. Now, one of the issues that, from a policy standpoint, the commission could uh, and would have to do some research, consider these ETs and suggest that they only be considered along with ETs if you believe they provide more entertainment than they do transportation. Um, because they would, from a, from a, 
if they would fit the specification part of it. And again, we have not done the research to do that. But uh, again, providing tours is typically what you have said. If you if you're a tour only, then it's an ET. Is what you've through your actions of the commission. You've not developed. It's not been a policy in the rules, but that's been your actions. Yeah, that was kind of my observation. Is that you know, unlike the golf carts, which are more point to point, this seems like it's providing more of a tour and kind of entertainment experience. Um, sure. Um, so the definition of low speed vehicle that's in the Metro code, um, pretty much just cuts and pastes the definition from the state law that I read to you all earlier. But one thing that is key is whether the vehicle is operated on a for hire basis or not, which is very broadly defined a transaction whereby any money, thing of value, charge tickets, surcharge payment, pecuniary content consideration or compensation, reward, donation, tip, or any other remuneration or profit is paid to, accepted by, or received by a driver, employee, agent, owner, or other representative of passenger vehicle for hire or passenger vehicle for hire company in exchange for the temporary use by or for the transportation of a passenger, um, whether such is paid voluntarily upon solicitation, demand request, contract agreement, or as a surcharge, or otherwise in conjunction with the purchase of parking wherein, wherein the transportation is part of the services provided. So that's just kind of like we, we wrote that as broadly as we possibly could to try to capture everything. But that's the key thing here. It's not regulated by this board unless they, they provide for higher transportation, which they are proposing to do. There does not seem to be any um, limitation in the LSV chapters, chapter 673, as Mr. Fields was referencing, um, that um, requires that they um, provide point-to-point -point transportation as opposed to um, like fixed routes. So as a point of clarification, on the number of applications on the application for the 20 permits this would be 20 in addition to the 38 okay and we don't know how many of the 38 are being used or not used we we did not ask for a report from the company to make a determine after their utilization uh one thing i would remind the commission of is you had, had a uh, moratorium against adi any additional uh, vehicles to the uh, public right-of-way which expired on august the 31st pending the availability of the D connect downtown you took that action back in May, I believe. Could have been April. One thing I'd like to add, uh, just as an older commissioner, we, we want to be real careful about even if they're, if they're being used or they're not being used, because it, at any one point, that could explode. Uh, and that, uh, you know, an event be downtown, uh, several events back to back be downtown, and they have the ability to bring all those carts out, and then we add another 20 to it. Um, anytime the, the the ability of it is 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 more the priority than if they're being used or not, in in my opinion. I mean, I guess I, I hear you 100%, and I work right in the 5th and Broadway building, and I get stuck behind a pedal tavern or a bus or a golf cart every day, every day. Um, I am troubled by one company having all 38 permits. I'm not a fan of monopolies um, in a space. Um, and so I think that's, that's, the, that's the question for me in terms of the use of the permits. And, and, and to their credit, they were uh, originators and have stuck through the entire roller coaster of that whole scene. And so it, it wasn't like they have bought everybody out or did something to monopolize that portion of the industry. They kind of originated it and just stuck with it. Yeah, more power to them. Yeah. Not the FTC. So. It's my understanding, George, George Wright, though, they do operate tours. They're not point, necessarily point-to-point. -point. Um, so Ms. Castonis is correct. With these vehicles you're talking about? No, Joy Ride, the current low-speed right. vehicle operator in Nashville. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, uh, yes. Ms. Steelman reminded me that initially, back in 2015, you approved uh, three companies. Uh, and two of them have since uh, not renewed 
their certificates. Joyride's the only one that's continued to operate. And what's the renewal period? The renewal is of uh, March to March. No, April to April. April. It, they all expire on April 30th. Okay. So then, it, you know, at that point, it could be proper to consider additional companies or, or whomever would, would apply. For at any time the commission would like to reconsider their act or to take additional actions, you could establish a public hearing. Uh, and again, I'm probably speaking for legal, but you could certainly have a public hearing and discuss the issue. So another point of clarification, because I'm the baby commissioner here. Um, are, so the two companies that went out of business, how many permits did they have? Are there, are we, help me understand, are we expanding? What is, what is, what is happening with those two companies in terms of the number of permits they have? Or did have, or did the not have? One company, I think, had one permit okay. that he actually operated, maybe two. <laughs> the other one had maybe a dozen. It was, they were both companies that, again, closed. That was an addition to the 38? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I guess the question is, is, had those companies not closed, what would have been the number of permits we had issued? I can't tell you for certain without, with, without going back to the minutes in 2015, because they've not been in business for the last three or four years. And would those 38, they would all have been issued at one time, right? They grew, or they were? I don't, I don't think we went back and added any <clears throat> since then. I'm new as well, so I don't know that question. I think the only thing that's happened, I think, now I think Joyride did buy the inventory of uh, Cruising, which is one of the companies, it was the larger of the two that have, that have gone out of business. Uh, the other one was, uh, uh, again, was a small company, and I'm not sure what they did with their equipment. How, how long have these been operating? He's 38. I believe the year that commission approved it was in 2015. So just by deductive reasoning, Mr. Relaford, at, at, at one point, it looks like this commission determined that if Mr. Fields' numbers are right, about 50 or so okay. permits existed at one point. And I, I want to... He said two and one. He yeah, said two and about a dozen. About a dozen, oh, yeah. a dozen. I, I want to bring some light to that 50 also. We did not have the explosion of the party buses and, uh, and, and as many pedal taverns on the road at the time. So at, at, the, at that time, the bulk of the traffic was pedal carts and and golf carts and however, whatever the expanded ones were. Um, so we, we didn't we didn't have nearly the activity that we have on the streets at that time. So so that number was not. I know it sounds like a <coughs> lot, given what we have now, but it, it's it, it's relative. They were if you take a percentage. They were a very small percentage of the traffic versus what's down there now. It's you know the the question we have is is a hard one um, because it does seem like the answer is no to the question is there a need for additional low speed vehicles? But you know we've got Na vintage Nashville tours coming in here with a very innovative idea to enter this marketplace with something Nashville doesn't have and Joyride certainly isn't providing it uh, with these vintage um, electric low-speed vehicles and um, if we say no to the preliminary question then their permits not even going to get considered um, that, that bothers me a little bit question yeah so the renewal is in March or April correct it is in, it is in April it is in April uh, and just like we've had some other conversations around the uh, party buses or entertainment vehicles we've we've made a move to reduce those at the next renewal which is 
May of next year? Next April as well. Next April as well. And without the Connect study, I uh, would venture to say there's an opportunity that these, even these 38 that are currently permitted gets reduced as well. I think it's worth considering or waiting until that study is complete. Would that, um, just to clarify, and this is for you, Ms. Costonis, at this meeting, do we have the option of deciding that the number of permits should be lower than the existing 38? Um, no, I don't believe so, but let me double check the language. The, the, I mean, the language that you're going by is 1673030 findings, issuance of certificate or additional permits. If the MTLC finds that further or additional LSV service, means low speed vehicle, in the metropolitan government area is required by the public convenience and necessity, and the applicant is fit, willing, and able to provide such service and to conform to the provisions of this chapter and the rules promulgated by the MTLC, the MTLC may issue a certificate of public convenience and necessity stating the name and address of the applicant, the number of vehicles authorized upon such certificate, and the date of issuance. In making the above findings, the MTLC shall, at a minimum, take into consideration the number of LSVs already in operation, whether existing service is adequate to meet the public need, the character, experience, financial condition, and responsibility of the applicant, and such criteria as may be adopted by the MTLC in its rules. Um, so yes, it is a two-pronged finding as we discussed. You first have to make a de determination as to whether um, uh, the public necessity and convenience um, would be served by adding more LSV vehicles to the streets of Nashville. And that's usually a yes, no question. And then after that question is answered, then you go on to the next question as to whether the particular applicant um, meets all the qualifications. Um, as Commissioner Pyle mentioned, though, another option would be to defer this decision until more data is available. Yeah, I agree. I also am I'm struggling with, you know, the fact that we considered Right, the number of sort of slow moving <laughs> vehicles that are providing entertainment um, value, right? And so we've already set that number. So I would struggle with, you know, a finding, reaching a finding that we needed to add additional permits for slow moving vehicles that are providing <laughs> some sort of entertainment value to the public. I would also say that given current strain on traffic and the, you know, uh, study that is you know, underway that, you know, for me at this point, you know, the matter of um, public inconvenience would outweigh the, you know, uh, convenience or the public interest in having a unique or innovative concept. And I guess my argument would be um, a little along the lines of what Mr. Hernandez said, also Mr. Relford, in that I don't relish even though um, they have done a great job, I don't relish a monopoly in any one sector. Uh, also, taking into consideration that there was approximately 12 to 14 other permits operating in that field that are no longer operating, uh, I would see at least a small opportunity or, or should be allowed a small opportunity uh, for these innovative vehicles, or at least uh, uh, competition in, in, in the area. If, if I may, from an NDOT standpoint, uh, well, no one is more sympathetic to businesses than I am, and I think anybody would know that. Uh, with, without the additional data, we've, you, you, have, you have put off several decisions based on data. Uh, including uh, last October the or last November the horse-drawn carriage uh, decision, which will be not their the their application from last year will actually be considered at this meeting in <coughs> November. So uh, I would caution you. You did take action on on the ETs and ordinance change, which you recommended and the council adopted, that would give you authority to reduce. Once you add 
uh, in this particular one, and again, I'd have to look to legal, my guess is you would also have to go through another process to reduce them, which would include going back to the Metropolitan Council and ask for authority to do so. Correct. So if you give it, it is not, if, if they fail to operate properly, if they go, if they violate rules, if they commit, if, if there are those sort of issues, that's different. But if they just basically operate and do their part, once they have it, they would continue to have it um, for at least a period of time, again, depending on what the, the council may or may not take action. Did I misstate any of that, Ms. Castones? I think that's correct, Mr. Fields. Um, so looking at um, the criteria for suspension and revocation, it says a certificate under, issued <coughs> excuse me, under the provisions of this chapter may be revoked, suspended, placed on probation, otherwise restricted, or not renewed by the MTLC if the holder thereof has violated any of the provisions of this chapter or failed to comply with any rule or regulation established by the MTLC, violated any provision of this code or other ordinances of the metropolitan government or laws of the United States or the state of Tennessee, the violation of which reflects unfavorably on the fitness of the holder to offer transportation services, failed to pay assessments or taxes due to the metropolitan government or made a misrepresentation or false statement when obtaining a certificate or additional permits or transferring a certificate. And before there is such a um, decision made, they are um, supposed to have an opportunity for a hearing as well. So um, it is pretty hard to take away permits from someone other than for cause once they have them. We did amend Chapter 677, or the council amended Chapter 677, um, regarding the entertainment transportation vehicles so as to be able to do that. But we would need to make a similar um, council amendment to Chapter 673 to allow that to be done with LSVs. Well, you know, I'll get on my soapbox briefly. Um, you know, I, I really echo the, the comments of Commissioner Carr. I don't, uh, you know, working downtown, seeing the congestion there, we have deferred decisions based on data. I, I agree in terms of the need to have that data to understand, but I am concerned with our, what I, as what I've seen from our process in terms of, it just seems that there are a lot of historical companies who have the bulk of a lot of the permits and then new participants in the marketplace are crowded out because they have an inability to come in and get the permit so that they can innovate. I mean, this is a new idea. I commend a Vintage Wine Tours um, for, for coming up with that idea. You know, I, I like competition. I think competition breeds excellence, both, you know, in sports and business and every part of life, really. And so I mean, I would like to encourage that at the same time, expanding permits to your point, Mr. Fields, and, and to what we've discussed is not the right move at this time, in my opinion. That's why I'm so focused on what renewed permits were, not, were available or not available, um, because I do want to, you know, to, to give business owners a chance to, to, to you know, make a living and, and really develop the business of our city. Um, and so that to me is the push pull of this. Right. So is it the question of do we need additional permits? No. But are there if there are permits that are available that can be made use of, that would be where I would look. And that's the and I understand the point about taking away permits being very difficult. And also the pending reduction that we have. Bear in mind sometimes we um, when it comes to permits, they, they only exist when the commission says they exist. And when they um, those that were there when they failed to renew, they become void by law. So in order to reinstate them, it'd be an affirmative action from the commission. So it's not a matter of they're out there. It's just a matter you would create them today if you were to approve new ones. Well, I will also add, this sounds like, you know, this is the byproduct of having a commission. You hear everything, everyone's viewpoints as they come to mind. But, I mean, we're talking about two different concepts here you know, low-speed vehicles versus entertainment vehicles. I mean, these are smaller vehicles um, that are not taking up the footprint that a typical ETV would take. Um, and so, there, you know, there's a reason why it's two different provisions of our uh, regulations. Um, so it's, I don't think it's, I don't think we should just lump them in with ETVs. I mean, they're their own type. Uh, we do have a limit. Right now at 38, um, 
and Joyride has them all. And but I think we need to decide if there's a need for low speed vehicles, not just general vehicles or not just additional commercial vehicles in general. I think we need to decide, do we need to, is there a public convenience and necessity for additional low speed vehicles? That's the question we need to answer. So is, is the question more in number of permits or vehicles? Because I don't think all 38 are on the road. <clears throat> so, I mean, is the vote for, is there a, a need for more low speed vehicles or actually permits? Or were we just considering that one in the same? Yeah, yeah. What are the, what are our enumerated factors in terms of determining public need, if you have that? Sure. I mean, it's unfortunately pretty vague. Um, but I will say, like, for example, you could defer and ask Joyride to come to the next um, commission meeting so that you can ask them some of these questions and get some more of the facts about what's already on the streets right now. Um, that would be an option for you as well. Um, but um, the finding language, it just says, Further or additional LSV service in the metropolitan government area is required by the public convenience and necessity, and then says, take into consideration the number of LSVs already in operation, whether existing service is adequate to meet the public need. Very vague. Sorry. It's clear. It's clear. Is there anyone from Joyride here today? Well, if they're not here, I'd like to make a motion to get Joyride in front of the commission so that we can actually see how many of those active permits that they have that are actually being used. So your motion is to defer action on this and, and ask Joy Wright to appear at the next meeting to provide a data? Correct. Would, would that include linking those with physical vehicles? So VIN numbers, drivers, driver licenses, right? Is that the definition of use that they have a vehicle? for which the permit, like, right, they have 38 licenses. Do they have 38 vehicles in their fleet? Do we have a list of the 38 VIN numbers and the 38 drivers? I believe they exist, again, in the office in a folder. Yeah. Uh, and, <laughs> and, and I'm and curious what we're asking them. Right, right. What, what are we asking we, for? we certainly can bring, we can ask uh, Mr. Sizemore and his team to uh, appear at the next meeting and be prepared to talk about utilization and numbers and so forth. Inspections? Are they all inspected? They all ins we inspect them each year. So speaking with Mr. Sizemore, I believe he actually has more vehicles than he actually has mm -hmm. permits. He's got backups, different types <laughs> that can be used in that same field. So I guess the, the, the question we would pose to him is how many employees do you actually employ that you can actually put a body in a seat and put those on the street? Now, I, I'm assuming it might come back as that depends on the event. But, uh, you know, that, that gives us a chance to get him in front of us to say, well, what's the percentage of the events toward the, to the bodies? So that, you know, if, he, if that's twice a year, he maxes that out. Well, that's, that's, is that really utilization when another company could be doing it 90% of the time during the year? So, again, I, I would make that motion just to get him in front of us so that we could ask those questions. Yeah, and so we're comparing apples to apples. I mean, what I'd really, and Vintage, you can hear me back there. I mean, what I'd like to hear from Joyride and from Vintage is tour routes, you know, times, number of vehicles during that time. Because what I'm concerned about is the congestion downtown, right, with low-speed vehicles, while also wanting to provide a space for a unique type of service. If that, meant that the market may not be served by. If this is helpful, their operational areas of downtown is, is generally the inside <clears> loop. <throat> they do not have operational hours. They may operate during rush hour. Okay. They do not have a limitation. In 2018, the commission removed that rule. Gotcha. So that's where I was cautioning on the vehicles they have. They could all be operating at the same time. May, they may not be. I don't have an answer for that. Gotcha. Well, Vintage, I, I would like to know the, where you're going to go. Like, where are you going to stop? When are you going to stop? how it's going to work, all that good stuff, if we defer this and this motion passes. Thank you. 
Is there a second? Um, Commissioner Relaford, if you refer to section 603 of the TLC rules, that rule um, prescribes the operational area of all low speed vehicles. I can read it if you like. Um, yes, please. Okay. <laughs> it says all low speed vehicles, unless permission is granted by the TLC or TLC staff director in advance, must operate within the following boundaries. Generally following Blair Boulevard to 12th Avenue to I-40 inner loop, crossing I-40 to include the inner loop, to the river, then crossing to East Nashville, then following the river to Shelby Park, to Woodland Street, to Gallatin Pike, to Douglas Avenue, to Dickerson Pike, to the Spring Street crossing the river, with the river as the border north to Van Buren Street, to Third Avenue North, to Coffee Street, to Rosa Parks Boulevard, to Dominican Drive, to 11th Avenue North, to I-40, to 28th slash 31st Avenue Connector, to Natchez Trace, to Blair, Blair Boulevard. The area of Cowan Street with Dickerson Pike is an operational border. Uh, low speed vehicles must use the Division Street 12th Demungbrian Street viaducts to cross I 40. They will not be allowed to operate on the following streets. There we go. <laughs> that's, that's the money right there Church, Charlotte, Broadway, West End, or 21st outside of the inner loop west of I 40. <laughs> yeah, <that's... laughs> Thanks for saying something. <laughs> oh, there. Thank you to you. <laughs> Thank you, Chief. Um, In addition, state law prohibits LSVs to operate on any public streets with speed limits higher than 35 miles per hour. Well done. Thank you. You're welcome. So my motion stands. <laughs> Seconded. Is there any further discussion, Mr. Powell? Do you want to add anything to the deferral? All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. We would ask them to come in November, but unless there was a problem, we will bring them here in October. All right. Thank you. Next, we have an annual meeting for the purposes of considering applications for the certificates of public convenience and necessity for new or additional pedal vehicles. Uh, I've got a number of requests to speak on the issue of pedicabs. If you've already spoken regarding... Um, the slow moving vehicles and I know you had addressed your uh, position about the pedicabs as well I will will not recall you um, Abigail Goodrich okay. Hi everyone I'm Abigail Goodrich I reside at 746 Rolling Fork Drive in Brentwood Tennessee I am a current pedicabber so first of all thank you for putting up with us um, I have been doing this this whole season. Um, my only fear is that I can only speak on myself and my experience. So, um, with the additional 12 that are being permitted for, um, just sort of saturating the, um, existence as it, as it exists now, um, it feels very, very viable for all of us and safe and, um, I'm, I have a fear of, of almost doubling, you know, the size of pedicabbers down there. It would just cause a little bit of problems. So that is the only thing I can speak of. So thank you for your time. Right. Ash uh, Pereira. Did I pronounce your name correctly? Yeah, Pereira. Pereira. Um, I'm Ash Pereira. Um, I manage and uh, run with Travis Stowers here in Nashville Bike Cab. Uh, we've been operating since 2019, um, right before COVID. <laughs> um, but we survived and we've been doing very well. We've been very grateful for the opportunity to work here. Um, that being said, we've we've spent a very long time trying to building um, a very safe, professional, and sound business um, in pedicabs here to retain an amazing reputation. Uh, we work with the Metro Police 
um, and Sergeant Bryant downtown to uh, work with special events for those who are disabled or um, may need rides from to and from events. So we've been working with them specifically. We also um, uh, work privately with Opry Mills as well uh, for some of their events and some of their needs, uh, which doesn't necessarily pertain to downtown. But um, originally we came and asked for 20 permits. We are not asking for any permits today. Um, we do feel that um, just a few months ago, we actually got our six permits that were allotted to us last year on the street because we wanted to make sure they were absolutely sound, um, that everything was good to go. So we've only been operating our new six permits for a few months. Uh, last year, there was two companies approved and 10 permits extra approved, um, in which one of the companies I know is just using one of their permits as a backup. So not actually being there on the, the street, but just as a backup bike, because our bikes have smaller components, they do break more often, and we do need that wiggle room. Um, I do often see that some smaller companies more utilize um, the cabs uh, on bigger event days and Fridays and Saturdays, so you do see an influx of more cabs during that time. I also want to differentiate for anybody in the room that's interested. Um, these are, and I know that you all know this, pedicabs are, are bike taxis. We are not the pedal taverns. So anybody here in the room that is thinking that we're asking for more pedal taverns, it's totally different. Uh, we have uh, electric assist on our bikes. We, we are very m maneuverable. We do point A to B transportation. We do off also offer tours, things like that. But my, my point in saying this is that, you know, originally we did ask for 20 and we do have 18. Uh, we do not feel that there is a need um, more so in the city and that the new permits that have been allotted um, haven't been on the road long enough within the year to really see the impact, especially um, knowing that the study hasn't been done either, that there's not been um, enough time to determine that. Uh, so we were imploring you know, the commission to really take time to see how um, these new companies are operating, how uh, these new pedicabs are operating within the city, and how it's taking up space because you know, um, though each permit, you know, requires a rider. So we have a lot more riders than maybe a party bus permit, you know, which takes more space or, or golf carts per se. You know, there's many more golf carts than there are pedicabs for sure, um, permitted and allotted. But um, these people take management and time, and we're very careful about who we put on the road. And so I, I just implore that we take the time to ease into it and, and be careful about that. Anyway, that's all I have to say. Thank you very much. Thank you. Travis Stowers. <clears throat> Afternoon. Uh, thank you, commissioners. Um, I am against adding more pedicabs. Uh, one of our main competitions is actually golf carts, like Chris, Chris and uh, Joyride is also in Houston, Texas, where I'm also at. So like, they just don't have a lock in the city of Nashville. You know, we pedicabs have motors and we are just as fast as golf carts. I just wanted to put that out there. So there's like, Chris doesn't have a monopoly. I don't think so, especially in Nashville. Uh, but I am, I am on my fifth market that I put pedicabs into. Uh, this is probably my favorite market of all time. Uh, it's a very exciting time for the city of Nashville. Billy's been great and wonderful. Um, it's just a slippery slope in the pedicab world to add more. How do you vet? How do you, you know, I came here with a business plan and financials and proved that pedicabs could work on the streets. Like the ordinances are pretty convoluted. You know, you guys just award permits. I think you got lucky to have us come in and show you how pedicabs can be done but i've also lost markets because my competition just puts everybody and anybody on a pedicab and they have no <laughs> rules or regulations so how do you vet you know to award more permits in the future i also am concerned that the uh, studies have not been done and that if we add more pedicabs to the streets 
that possibly pedicabs would get blamed if congestion gets worse or stays the same. You know, I just don't want to be in front of that bullseye. So thank you all. And uh, one last thing about the vintage uh, golf carts that I do, my neighbors that own those in Galveston, uh, they're a little bit larger. And I'm always worried about safety. So I put these, we put new double seat pedicabs on the streets in Nashville and I tested them out and I completely put the most amount of braking power ever on a pedicab. You know, so safety, safety should always be of your utmost concern. So when you put like these vehicles look cool, right? They look safe, but we don't know if they are or not. I don't know if my neighbor, you know, they seem to be doing a good business, but you know, safety should be everything. The uh, also congestion and pissing off locals because of congestion. So uh, thank you all. Is there anyone else who would like to speak on the issue of uh, certificates of public, of public convenience and necessity for new or additional pedal vehicles? Uh, did someone raise their hand behind you? Go ahead, sir. Hello, I'm Craig Davis with Pro Pedicab uh, here to request three additional pedicab permits. Um, I understand why Nashville Bike Cab would not want more permits. Um, they obviously have the largest amount of permits of the four companies that exist in Nashville. Um, I'm requesting three more for the reason that it, there is still um, demand at the larger events, especially the Nissan Stadium events, uh, the north and the south side of the stadium. I work each of those, and there tend to be more on either one side or the other of the stadium. You could have three more permits with my company, and um, you still wouldn't be able to accommodate all of the business and the um, demand th that these large events generate. In addition to that, um, insurance prices come down precipitously once you get what is considered a fleet, which is five pedicabs, which is what I would have if I got my three, because I have two right now. So right now, it's just my girlfriend and I who work with my company. I'd love to have the opportunity to bring on some talented riders and vet them as stringently as National Bike Cab has. I can attest to their, uh, their fleet of riders is top notch. I've been doing this about 10 years and um, it's a joy to work with them alongside them. And I have a good relationship with Travis and Ash. So uh, we do a good job of self-regulating and I agree with Travis about safety being um, a priority. But uh, yeah, I just want to say a few words and to make a case for my three additional pedicabs. That's Thank, Thank you. Hello, my name is Chelsea Lovett and um, my company is Rock and Roll Rides. I was one of the first companies that was approved in 2019 after um, we had a company here from New Orleans um, in which I was working for uh, as well. They took the permits away. They traded our permits for pedal tavern permits. And as Ash uh, distinguished, we, we aren't pedal taverns. We're pedicabs, electric bikes that provide an experience for people um, uh, as they get along and, and around the city. Um, I've been doing this job since 2011. I started on a non-motorized cab in New Orleans in the French Quarter. Uh, the company transferred me here. Um, they traded the permits for pedal tavern permits. Since then, I've worked music festivals. I've worked in Austin, Texas. Um, I've worked all over the country. I've worked in Paris and in London, somehow um, fell into it. But um, I actually have a little PowerPoint presentation and wanted to comment on all of these issues. Um, as I am one bike, it's the first six seater, and I was the only operating company um, since we were both Nashville ca Bike Cab and I approved. I've been operating and on the streets since 2019. Um, we were still allowed to operate minimally during COVID and we practiced safety, safety um, 
procedures until it got, um, well, a little too, uh, well, y y'all know how the pa pandemic went and it, everyone took a hit. So anyway, um, I didn't want to ask for a lot of permits, um, because of traffic studies and because of the convolution, um, and congestion downtown. I've seen a boat on wheels. I've seen, uh, people screaming and drunk on any kind of ve vehicle you can imagine. And, um, to associate pedicabs with those kind of vehicles is a problem for congestion, um, I think is a mistake. And if, if you're looking at safety and um, traffic problems, you need to look at those kind of vehicles and golf carts. Um, a few things I want to mention before I show you guys um, a couple of um, examples. And, and what we need is data, right, to... to um, understand what's actually going on. And um, all I can say is that I've been on the streets working, operating my small business, um, meeting people. I, I didn't plan to ever have a fleet or to expand. Um, but um, as I've worked and given people rides, um, I'm a musician as well. So I, um, I like to play music for people and create an experience. Um, it's like a soundtrack to a movie. Um, and it's a green way to get from point A to point B in the city. Um, and I, I have countless pictures of people happy at Titans games um, throughout me working since 2019. Um, safety's an issue. Um, I understand the other company not wanting to have more permits because um, they have a s successful business. They have lots of people on the streets, um, lots of riders. Um, and um, I think that one thing we need to note and, and be aware of is monopoly. Um, and I think um, Council um, and Relaford pointed that out really well. And this is a growing city um, that needs to remember our small businesses and support those. Um, so um, I think that um, allowing, I've asked for nine more permits. Um, I have an investor in another company that um, has a lot of experience with advertising and um, they have multiple companies um, all over the US. Um, I'm not trying to be a, a large entity. I'm trying to be a small business that supports other small business. The reason I um, have discussed partnering with them is that we can have advertising on the back of our cabs so that we can have ad campaigns and support smaller businesses. Um, I, I've released a record and I'm in the competition sort of scene um, there and I think it would be a beautiful thing to support local musicians releasing music um, with an ad screen and their record on the back with 60,000 impressions downtown. Anyway, um, I, uh, I have a small uh, video also to show you guys some, some data of our operations at a football game, the first Titans game, uh, that we'll pull up here. Yes. If you could do the video first, please, yeah. This is a recent news clip from the Titans game, and um, they, before uh, I, I was interviewed, so. Oh, that's the uh, Tennessee game. Yeah, I, I sent a better game. It was fun. The whole stadium was orange. Was. So, um, it was hot. But it was victorious. Oh, I don't know why that sent a picture. That's a video of me playing music. So, there's there's some data for you that I, I do that. Uh, that well, okay. So that's a. These are some clips of just me working throughout the years at the Titans games uh, on my one bike, um, trying to be as respectful as possible. Uh, to our traffic issues. Um, that's, that's the Titans game. Everyone's, you know, as you can see, happy. Um, but it's become sort of this organic brand, Rock and Roll Rods, that I, I never planned or, or um, thought would be what it is today. And, and I never thought I'd be proposing more permits um, in this way. But um, I think we have... Yeah, I don't know if we have sound on it, hopefully.
this is kind of what it looks like on a Titans game where everyone's walking. That was Daniel's example. So that's just a small news clip of what an event day looks like and what I'm proposing and, and why I think the necessity of more cabs, um, especially to promote diversity of companies and sort of a different um, opportunity, a, a different experience for riders and that um, my company is called Rock and Roll Rides. It's music based. We play music. We give people an experience um, and uh, uh, we would join forces with Pedicab United who would back us for our ads, basically. It would still be the local rock and roll rides company, but they would help us expand in um, experience with having, you know, um, Titans ads or, you know, collaborating there. Um, this is our mission statement to bring safe, clean, and reliable pedicab transportation to Nash Nashville, um, combining my very organic, small, local business um, that has been on the streets since day one of 2019 and combining with um, United uh, Pedicab Network, uh, we can go down a little bit. Um, so yeah, these are the other places that um, this company that they, they have, I've worked um, with them in Austin and um, they have LA, Boston, Las Vegas. Um, basically, the point of me showing you this is to show that I have an established um, organization coming in to help with our ads and provide um, a streamlined service, um, safe bikes. We have a lot of safe. Uh, we have a lot of um, experience with safety training, which I'd like to address shortly. Um, that's of course a concern um, with with these cabs and and with riders and with a large pedicab company not being able to manage their riders. Um, uh, as well as a non-permit company. Um, so uh, this is uh, a, another slide. So we can just go on down just to look at some of these ads we've got. And um, yeah, so this is our other, our last slide there. Um, winning theme, yeah. So just to show you guys in a form, formal way of, of the collaboration here and how they want to take us on to help us with ads. And, and um, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm one person who's operated the spike and I've, um, I've seen uh, every, all kinds of cities, all kinds of operations. And I really think um, that supporting a small local business and allowing diversity um, is important in this growing, booming city. Um, I sent you a couple, uh, I sent other pictures as well um, to show um, some data uh, of uh, what I've observed um, downtown. Um, so one thing I wanted to propose, if you could pause this really quick. Um, when I worked in New Orleans, there were three companies. Um, they had, I think, a total of 20 bikes, but they only had nine permits. They had extra bikes that they could keep on hand that would be if, in case there were mechanical problems. But 
there were only nine bikes allowed out at one time. And it's still like that, I think, in New Orleans. And, and that kept safety under control. It kept congestion in the French Quarter under control. And diversity balanced um, for each company. Um, I'm not necessarily proposing um, t to take permits away, but I think that it would be fair um, to look at in, in perhaps this further study at maybe limiting permits out at one time. Um, that said, um, the other company has um, 20 bike permits, um, and for them to stand up and say that other companies shouldn't be allowed a chance to have more permits shows kind of the monopoly and the Im imbalance here. Um, I'm not trying to throw anybody under the bus, um, but Ash, Travis doesn't live here. Ash is managing this company. Um, we're all kind of in this together as we, as we did start, but um, I think that it is important to look at diversity and the opportunity of a smaller company. And um, I have a couple of videos of um, just some riders that um, have ridden backwards on the sidewalks, have violated some um, traffic uh, safety issues um, that I feel proves that um, if there were to be permits given up so that other per companies could have permits um, in a balance, um, I have a couple of those included there. Um, if, if we're wanting to look at data and if we're wanting to look at that at a later point, but. Well, I, I, as far as us reviewing video of violations of, I guess I'm assuming other drivers from other companies, I don't think that's the relevant issue for today. Sure. And, and I wouldn't have brought that up had the other company not said they felt that, you know, they, that we shouldn't have more permits allowed. Um, I 100% agree with that. Um, because when I'm riding and there's 15 of their riders out, um, it, it's different than non riders. And my concern is safety. Um, and like I said, uh, we're all kind of in this together and I, I really do want to just promote pedicabs over um, golf carts, motorized vehicles. I mean, this is the greenest way to travel in the city. Um, it's, it's efficient, we're smaller, um, and uh, I think it's really the best way. I mean, I, I, have, I have hundreds of people that I've given rides to over the years that say this is the best thing they've done in the city. So. It creates a memorable experience for Nashville. It creates a unique experience. It allows them to see what Nashville is from a local perspective. And I'd like to give musicians and people trying to stay alive in this city an opportunity to work a flexible, fun job that allows them to promote their music, um, looking at that down the line. But um, I know we're on the time limit here too, and I appreciate and everyone's time here. Um, and uh, I just wanted to reiterate that um, I wrote everyone a letter in 2019 as uh, a small business um, appealing for getting pedicabs back. And um, I think I sent, Miss Lisa sent everybody else uh, a letter again. And um, just wanted to thank you guys for the opportunity to bring pedicabs back and to look at them. And we all, um, I know every company owner here um, does want safety and traffic congestion to be looked at and we, we want to respect that of course um, so but also uh, monopoly needs to be looked at I think that we need to have all three companies uh, limited in terms of our bikes on the street and allowing me nine more permits would allow my company a chance to uh, be a small business that supports other small businesses in Nashville and um, to, to do the same thing. So, and, and I guarantee that with my experience being on the street riding um, since 2019, since day one, that um, I'll make sure of all of the uh, safety standards um, being upheld, especially with the backing I have um, from the 
larger pedicab company. So thank you. Thank you. Quick, quick question, if, if I may. Sure. Um, in the video, and I've observed this uh, in events, um, you know, the pedicabs are, are you know crossing the bridges in a lane. Is that um, is that like a designated lane for these cabs, or is it uh, or is it a pedestrian walkway? So that's the that's what I think needs to be looked at as well. Um, we the, they kind of change it honestly every game. Um, there's uh, vi there, I, I have videos actually of um, cabs going down, facing, you know, moving traffic, you know, which is an issue. Um, and then the pedestrians, um, we kind of, it, when I've worked events in the past, um, like Coachella, there's a huge outpour of people towards the very end. We call it the out. And it becomes so congested that you're asked to remain and wait um, or go to the other side. I think um, the games and events that I've worked, there's not been a problem uh, because they would block off the uh, motorized traffic and they would give us this whole lane. And we were able to move people, disabled people, um, because the Woodland Bridge, is th that hill is really steep. So we were able, able to provide handicapped, um, older people, um, you know, drunk people rides up these hills um, and on the other side safely. So um, I think it's important to, to designate that. I think that that has been an issue and something I wanted to point out with um, some of the other pictures of, of the other company. Have, they aren't able to manage as many um, of their riders and bikes that are out um, that I've, I've seen personally when I'm riding just for myself. So thank you. Yes. Any other questions? Was your question relative to the Stegenthaler pedestrian bridge? Yeah. Well, uh, no, actually, the uh, Korean Veterans Korean Bridge. Veterans bridge yeah. We're veterans not allowed to operate on Korean Veterans uh, Bridge. Korean Veterans Bridge has a bike lane that's meant for bicyclists. Stegen, they can operate. I don't know if, if they can or can't operate there. But you can operate in a lane of traffic, but you can't operate. You can't operate in a bike lane, I don't think, and you can't operate on the pedestrian bridge. I don't think. Pedestrian bridge is pedestrians and commuter bicycles. Special events police will manage anything like that. So there are times where it's possible. But by policy, I don't believe that they can operate at any time on the Siegenthaler pedestrian bridge. Correct. Again, the only time, I, I agree with you, absolutely. It's what that's what the rule requires. Yes, that was. I mean, I, I believe that commuter bicycles can operate on the bridge, but no motorized vehicles or vehicles for hire can operate on the pedestrian bridge. If only Commissioner Rogers was here. <laughs> I know he'd love to weigh in. Um, scooters certainly are, are banned from uh, operating on the pedestrian bridge, as it is considered a greenway. Um, there's been discussion that goes way beyond me about e-bikes, um, so I, I can't give an opinion on the e-bikes. I was looking at some of the definitions in the state code, um, and um, I was actually looking at this in relation to hearing a couple of the folks um, describe their vehicles, and I wanted to make sure that they actually did fit within the state definitions. Mm -hmm. So the state has a definition for, um, <clears throat> they use the words rickshaws and pedicabs interchangeably. Um, so that was one thing I was just wanting to make sure that everyone was um, uh, fitting within that. But the other thing was that was concerning me is um, uh, in terms of the, the motor assist, um, whether it was compliant with state law. Um, and <clears throat> there's definitions for electric bicycles and motorized bicycles. And motorized bicycle is excluded from the definition of motor vehicle. Um, but it means a, a vehicle with two or three wheels, an automatic transmission, and a motor with a cylinder capacity not exceeding 50 cubic centimeters, 50 cc, which produces no more than two brake horsepower and is capable of propelling the vehicle at a maximum design speed of no more than 30 miles per hour on level ground. Um, so I just wanted to make sure that, that everyone's vehicles um, did not exceed 
you know, that definition or the definition of pedicab rickshaw. But um, in, in terms of what the bike lanes may be used for, I think electric bikes are allowed to use the bike lanes. And if they meet the definition of, well, I'm assuming y'all are, are motorized, not electric, is that correct? Essentially electric, because we we're batter, it's, a, it's an electric motor, uh, it's a bike motor. Um, so I guess it's, it's tricky. We, we have um, batteries we charge that power the mid-drive motor that powers the chain. So it's essentially, um, I know with my bike, I, I'm not really sure actually with their companies, but with my bike, it's you pedal and it assists. So you're pedaling um, while giving rides because giving six people a ride up a hill is pretty tough without an assist. <laughs> oh, okay, um, Billy's found the relevant rule. He says, Pedicabs and pedal carriages shall not be op operated within designated bicycle lanes, but instead, shall instead move with traffic like motor vehicles. So I'll get that after, but it was revised on uh, December 14, 2018, that defines a $60 pedestrian bridge usage. SUV is for pedestrian, recreational, <clears throat> commuter, bicycle use only skating, skateboarding, motorized vehicles, or any other form of commercial transportation are not permitted on the SPB, with the exception that motorized vehicles may be allowed with the express written approval of Public Works. Yes, I mean, I, mean, I think There's the video she was showing may have been of, of Woodland Bridge. Yes, yeah. we, we normally shut down just, for the game. Right, we normally just operate on Woodland Bridge. Um, and, and also Davidson is where um, I usually operate because it's flat and it's not in this main crazy traffic or in, in flow of people. Um, there, there's another side of the game where people park and it's a flat area and we give rides there. Mm -hmm. um, Maybe back to the, the root question is, do we believe that there is a need for additional certificates. Um, we have not yet. Yeah. Yep. Um, at this point in time, is there anyone else that would like to speak to the issue behind the TV? If you can say. Uh, my name is David Ogilvy. Um, I'm actually from Providence, Rhode Island. Um, I have been here this season in Nashville. Uh, and uh, basically, <clears throat> sorry, uh, I've been in the pedicab industry for almost 10 years now. Um, I have operated and maintained equipment like all over the United States between uh, uh, Newport, Rhode Island, Boston, Provincetown, Cape Cod. Um, I am the safety uh, manager for Adams Operations, which does the Coachella music festivals as well as the Bonnaroo Music, Fe music Festival here in Tennessee. What company are you with? Uh, so I operate my own company, I'm contracted. Um, but basically I just would like to give a little context here because I kind of understand the entire size of all the parties. Um, and specifically, it's like realistically, when everything comes down to it, it's honestly, it's really about safety. Um, and, you know, there's a lot that goes into the actual side of the business that you don't really see. Um, the people that are on the bikes when you're in town, yeah, you see them. But realistically, the side of the business that you don't see is like, you know, how those bikes are actually maintained um, safety-wise, who's like working on them, um, uh, what their qualifications are. Uh, another thing is where the bikes are actually kept is a big deal. Um, you know, are they in a commercialized garage? Are they sitting in a storage unit somewhere? Are they parked in someone's backyard? Um, I've worked with several, I've been to a lot of these meetings in several different states. Um, and honestly, uh, nobody has it really perfect. There's diff different ordinances, there's different rules for uh, every, every place. Um, but collectively, uh, what I have come to know is that, um, you know, most business, most uh, cities and states operate that operate pedicab businesses. Um, they start doling out licenses, um, and at some point in time, um, you know, usually you have 
something that's occurred here where you have somebody who has a good amount of licenses and then you have several other businesses that have just a couple of them. Um, and I think what Mr. Tra uh, Mr. Stowers had said earlier where he's like, hey, you kind of got lucky. Um, and I would tend to agree with that um, because unfortunately um, some, uh, when you vet pedicab uh, pedicabbers for licenses, um, there's a stringent uh, uh, process to go through that. And when you vet pedicab business owners, it's a lot looser. Um, and realistically, it's like, uh, when you look at somebody who's going to be doing this, I mean, um, I believe, you know, the roster in Newport, Rhode Island is something around 65 riders, and we have 18 bicycles there, permits. Um, they have three different companies. Uh, one company has about uh, eight permits, so they have the majority, and then three other companies are split up to just one or two or three permits themselves. Um, and basically, uh, you know, as you add permits or um, because you already have such a high roster, um, and I think, you know, when you like saw a video of the game itself, uh, yeah, there's a bunch of people milling about, but are all those people actually lining up to take pedicab rides? And most of the time, the case is no. Um, you know, uh, you'll see a lot of the guys that are on pedicabs, you probably won't see them riding the bike. You'll see them sitting on the side of the road waiting for a ride uh, for, for a lot of the times. Um, so it's just like, um, honestly, the, the dynamic that's been created here in Nashville uh, is pretty successful right now because, um, like I said, the overall goal is safety. We would like to, you know, have pedicabs operating all over the place. I work for several different companies, and if pedicabs didn't operate, I wouldn't have a job. And uh, so, realistically, it's just about um, total actual number of pedicab drivers that are on the road um, compared to the number of people that need rides. And then at the same time is like who's actually kind of overseeing those individual pedicabbers. And I can tell you on several occasions, you know, I have received emails from city council members uh, for problematic people that have nothing to do with the company that I'm actually contracted to work for. Um, and, uh, you know, it's uh, one of those things where, uh, again, uh, with advertising, that's wonder all well and good, but is the bike actually moving around the road or is it just there for to get paid for the advertising? Um, another thing is, is that um, here in the city, uh, uh, you guys talk about uh, moving traffic. Um, you know, uh, all of the pedicabs in the city currently, for the most part, as far as I know, um, are motorized pedicabs. Um, so our, our pedicabs required to be motor are motorized for new permits, um, or are you going to have actual pedal cabs, which go much slower? Um, and even though we are maneuverable and, and actually transport people probably faster than most of the golf carts or cabs, um, you know, is that going to be an issue where you're stuck on a hill and you don't have a motor on a pedicab and you can't put it up there? And all of those things to produce a pedicab that company that has um, kind of uh, that success and doesn't have major issues with police, uh, you know, uh, the fire department, uh, just uh, the city in general, um, takes a lot of time, energy, planning, and also money. And, um, you know, I just think that, um, you know, when you guys do make your decision, all of that, those things like have to be taken into context. Like, where will this business be operating? Uh, who is actually going to be, like, in charge of maintaining, operating the bikes? What are the bikes actually um, themselves? Are they pedal cabs or are they motorized pedal cabs? Um, you know, um, and with that, you know, comes another thing with batteries. What's the storage on batteries? Uh, you know, we use an ion battery, which is generally very, very safe um, if it's taken care of properly. Um, so, um, and I think that when Ash spoke earlier, that's really um, her thing is that she's kind of gone through a lot of those things to make that possible here in the city of Nashville. And that especially with uh, insurance costs in our industry is that um, mishaps and things that might not be managed properly 
could really affect our business, not only here in Nashville, but honestly throughout the United States. And uh, I'm glad to take any questions that you guys have. Thank you. Thank you. At this point in time, we'll close the uh, public hearing portion of our annual meeting, open it up for discussion by the commissioners. Um, sure. Go ahead. I'm just going to ask a few questions again, being a new commissioner. Do we have a count on the pedal cabs as well? Existing permits? So we, have, we have four companies with a total of, uh, we were just going back through it. I believe there are there 23, there are 23 permits and four companies. Because it's 18. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and on those permits, do they renew annually? And if so, when is that? April as well. Those are in April. Okay. April's a big month at the office. And did I hear this right, that of the 23, the person named Ash, she has 18 of those? I, be yes. I believe she has 18. Okay. So uh, I'll note that, you know, this category of vehicles that the TLC has jurisdiction over, you know, we treated it differently than the other vehicles, the other low-speed vehicles, ETVs, um, obviously they're not pedal taverns. Um, so that, that was a reason why additional permits were granted in recent years, as opposed to the other types of vehicles. They seem to be aiding with reducing congestion. At least that was the argument. You added Again, without I could pull the minutes, and I should have probably ten last year. And why do we have why is why do we have separate sort of time frames for the permits, <laughs> for the permit expiration versus sort of the annual meeting for public inconvenience? Over the years, they've been moved to accommodate various schedules. They could all all, all that is going to be up for discussion. In fact, next month when we present your annual calendar. So you just right. have to have the hearing. It doesn't tell you what month you've got to have the right. hearing. Yeah, it just seems to me it, it's, it's it, like we did with the ETVs, it's easier to make a determination and, you know, consider all the permits together, right, rather than taking this separate approach. At one time, they, when there were only, a, like, three things that you regulated, uh, they, they coincided. <laughs> As, as they have grown in additional responsibility for various reasons, they have been moved. For instance, last year, the ET hearing should have been in February uh, and decisions made in February. And we were going to, you know, the council, unfortunately or fortunately, has set the, they set many of the deadlines. So we probably will have to go back to council to uh, get some changes. But it's all possible. And oh, sorry, one more question is, uh, do we do any of the existing companies have any like you know violations or um, is there any reason? We don't have any outstanding. Yet. Okay. We, we've we, we almost never received complaints over the pedal care pay cabs. Okay. The only issue that we that I'll have is I have to caution them about moving through traffic. They do have to stay in the lane and they must treat themselves just like another like a car would. So you can't drive through the middle between lanes as motorcycles and other people sometimes do. So I have to caution them not to pull to the right and, and get in a lane to cross around. Thank you. And just to bring for council, just to bring a little bit of the past into the present, um, the, the, the pedal cabs diminished almost to kneel there at one time when the insurgent of all the the pedal taverns and the and the party buses and that we had large allotments of those turned in so that those people could go into um the pedal tavern and and party bus uh field you know i believe we had one gentleman at one time turn in 20 of them uh, for a trade for three in in a, in another field, and then it got down to where we almost had no uh, pedal taverns on the road, and so there has been a a revival, so to speak, of them over the last few years to to put them back into play, uh, so to speak. Um, 
so just I guess a couple of questions to the commission um, baby commissioner I am mr. Phil this is the only commission I know but we all regulate so here we go um, for our studies what have we seen in terms of pedicabs in terms of traffic congestion adding to it reducing it because to me that that kind of is the you know the, the crux of the question and we the transportation license commissions uh, had two studies over the last um, seven years that we were the last one with it with I believe was updated in 2018 all of the studies indicate that there is an impact on traffic uh, I think that's the biggest problem as we were talking about the low speed vehicles as we talk about the pedal carriages you know we're we're counting heavily that uh, connect downtown will give us revised data that will let you make informed decisions on you know what will the, what would the impact be uh, and is it you know is it there may be some impact but we should still do it so we're looking for that kind of information out of that which is why we continue to say we we would recommend holding decisions on the public right away until uh, connect downtown is complete. And the Connect Downtown study will have differentiating data regarding pedicabs that we can use to make a decision. We, I have not participated specifically in right, you know sorry. the data gathering. We did participate early on. It's my impression they're going to study all the things that you regulate that have impact on downtown. Nice. Yeah, I think to date we haven't had anything specific to pedal pedal vehicles. When, when you make that comment, we haven't had anything specific to pedal vehicles. When um, Beth presented the studies of their traffic finding, I thought that they did include all slow moving vehicles, so golf yeah. carts, pedal vehicles, in their analysis as they talked about the impact on the network of introducing any additional vehicle that moves slowly. I don't think it included pedal vehicles. Anybody. I, I thought it did yeah. because it, it, it's kind of like a turtle that you drop in the middle of the street. It's going to have the same impact if it's moving slowly on a car, if it's a big vehicle or a little vehicle. And she didn't differ. She's my, my, she specific, she my specific recollection last year when we had our meeting was um, pedal vehicles cannot and should not be lumped in with low speed vehicles and other. Uh, entertainment vehicles and other uh, touring type vehicles that we regulate they're just different they're smaller right on a traffic lane that's 10 feet wide or 11 feet wide it has a similar impact and their computer model can't specifically differentiate between that pedal vehicle going 10 miles an hour and a bus going 10 miles an hour is my recollection of the way she presented to us so we may have a different recollection of the presentation but intuitively if you drop a turtle in the middle of the street right like the turtle goes slow and the car goes slow behind it well I think the turtle might you know kind of be <laughs> to the right of the street sure. a little bit at times where things can go around that's my only I, like I just I've lived in New York, and there's tons of these pedicabs that people totally. jump in. And, you know, I don't think New York traffic's worse for the pedicabs. But I, I just don't know what they do or what they don't do in terms of the traffic study to say whether we need new permits or not. I just right. like the data to, yeah. to know. So, I, I, you know, I'm inclined to defer. You know, I would defer to the second half in a football game. I'd defer to this in here. I'm thinking about this Tennessee game this weekend. I'm sorry. <laughs> Shut up. We have a question. I'll give you thirty seconds if you take this podium. During the week, during the highest um, traffic periods, so we would affect rush hour like none because we're not allowed to operate PM4 and 6 and my other point is like uh, Commissioner Relaford said the turtle can stay to the right especially if you train your riders to be aware of public perception which we are for moments like this when we don't want to be perceived as the guys 
in front of you, slowing you down. So I, for one, train my riders. Um, and I think that the culture in general of pedicabbing is to try and get out of the way. If you notice that there are cars behind you, it's easy to pull a tricycle over and get, even if a, you don't need much space between cars that are parallel parked, to just squeeze in. Well, you can't do that on a golf cart necessarily, but on a pedicab, if there are three cars behind you, you can squeeze in and let them go past and get right back out and keep going and not obstruct the flow of traffic as much as might. I think we're not necessarily talking about what can happen or what could possibly happen, but I, I, I think the smarter option would be to defer to the time study uh, or the traffic study to see if it will, if in fact they are included and, and what effect they have. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go to, you know, I just came back from Brazil and ton of motorcycles and they're all driving between the cars and they can do it. Is that a safe thing to do? Did it help traffic? Of course it did, but, you know, I wouldn't want to see these pedal tavern, I mean, these pedal bikes going between cars as an option as well. Uh, right, and it definitely would not be safe. Well, Mr. Carr, would you like to make a motion? <laughs> She's got a question. She's had her. We have upgraded our pedicabs over years from two that since the beginning of them being here in Nashville, from two or three seater pedicabs to six person pedicabs. Six person pedicabs are almost twice the size. They hold twice the people and they provide twice the need. We do not have our entire fleet as a six person pedicab. But that's also something to consider, too, that though we have the same amount of permits as we did in 2015, um, we do provide more of an option, and then some of our bikes are much larger. So that's something to consider. Um, also, we're, we, as a company, uh, I just want to make this statement, we are not trying to monopolize anything. We are very highly in support of Pro Pedicab. Craig has provided um, top quality professionalism and safety and quality in his company that he's ran so far. Um, so if there was any consideration of that, we would like to highly support Pro Pedicab um, since we are not applying for permits today. That's all I have. We've closed the public meeting and we've got a very short amount of time. So I'm, I'm sorry. Do you have a motion? I'd like to make a motion to defer till the study comes in. Is there a second? Second. Second. Yes, the Connect Downtown study, to be specific. You want to do it again? I'd like to make a, to make a motion to defer until we get the data from the Connect Downtown study until we make a decision at that point. I second that motion. Any further discussion? The meeting subsequent to or later? <laughs> That's my only discussion point. I'd like to amend the motion to at least two meetings following the results of the Connect Downtown study so that we have a time to process, ask questions, and then we reconsider. That's a good point. That's a good point. It will be presented to I second to the us. amendment. <laughs> Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Mr. Fields, um, as I let you know prior to the meeting, I was going to need to leave today at 2.45. Do we, do we have uh, someone who can take over um, as chair for the remainder of the meeting? It, we it, do have a quorum, it looks like. It, it only, we do have a quorum, although another commissioner does have conflicts. So okay. he's okay. So we would maintain, they would, the, the commission would need to appoint a chair to continue the meeting. That's right. You just need to vote on it. Just appoint somebody to um, preside. I appoint Mr. 
I would appoint Mr. Carr as the as the, the member who's been here the longest. You with the most know, I would prefer that you experience. know procedure way better than I, sir. Mr. Relford, you want to, as an attorney, you want to... <laughs> well, I mean, that, let's, let's just get this meeting going, man. Yeah. Uh, right. <laughs> like, whatever y'all want to do. <laughs> In order for this to happen, do I, I need to stay for the voting of the ch interim chair to take over the meeting? No. Okay. I make a motion to appoint Mr. Hayes. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you, fellow commissioners, for naming me the chair today. I'm so excited. Our trust and faith are in. Thank you. Um, following the closure of the public hearing, the next item on our agenda is uh, consideration of, I guess, the review and reapplication of the general record, or, or, or let's see, it's the consideration of records and towing services. Uh, first up on our agenda is the review of the reapplication of general record company. Prior, priority Record Services of Tennessee Incorporated. Well, last year, Priority Record Services uh, applied, and they were denied on two occasions. The last denial was in August. The rules require them to wait for a year. Their year is up, and they've made new application. They're present uh, to uh, uh, present their application. I will, uh, I will, well, I'll also tell you under other business, I have some additional information regarding that at, after they've discussed. Is all their paperwork in order, Mr. Fields? The, the application is, uh, they have completed the application problem. The application's in order, but you have some additional information that you'd like to share with us under the other business? Well, basically, you know, they certainly need to discuss their application. We're going to ask for additional information. We would recommend that you require additional information for staff study uh, prior to making a decision. I think the commission is certainly happy to hear, the, hear their presentation. I, I remember every time that you guys have been here, uh, so I'm curious what's new. I represent Priority Record Service along with my colleague Rocky King, who you heard from last time. Um, our client is here. I just wanted to, for the interest of time, I'm going to be very brief. Um, I wanted to note that this is the application for Priority Record Service of Tennessee. This is a new company that it has existed since May of 2023. They have one truck registered, and that's the only truck that is associated with Priority Record Service of Tennessee. This company has complied with its insurance obligation and is otherwise compliant with all other enumerated criteria. The vehicle and the shop are located in Williamson County. And again, this is a new application and we are asking for your consideration today. Um, I'm here for questions and my client is here if you have additional questions. Thank you. I have a question. And um, so if the, if the if the company is located in Williamson County, uh, do, do we even regulate that? Um, that according to the Tennessee Secretary of State's office, that is not the location of their business. But um, uh, I will say that um, there is a provision about operating in Davidson County. Um, so I believe it is if you operate five times within Davidson County um, within a month, then you are obligated to be licensed in Davidson County as well. Within a 30-day period, you'd be required. And it, it, that is the company's intention? Yes, sir. In Do the last you... 30 days, has there been any operation, have, have there been any operations from this company? Um, from my understanding, it's just been within that five times. Um, my client is here and can uh, answer additional questions, but that is from my understanding that it, they have stuck within the five time limit. Yeah, or, I'm sorry. No, I, I just, Ms. Casones, you said the Secretary of State said that their business is not actually in Williamson County. Has that been a recent development? Uh, have you moved? 
Um, I will have to, ch I'd have to check with my client about that, um, why that's not updated. I, I think that's just a simple, you know, filing that needs to take place to get that updated with the correct address. But they are located, the shop, the truck are in Williamson County. It's in Franklin. Would that change um, anything, Ms. Costonis, that they could prove that the... I mean, I think we would look at the overall body of proof collectively, um, or I would recommend that you do that. Um, I will say that the, according to the Tennessee um, Secretary of State, the address for Priority Record Service of Tennessee, Inc. is 7009 West Belt Drive, Nashville, Tennessee, 37209. So just a, a few things here, and sorry, Mr. Hayes, jump in. Um, that, that's the registered address for the, the business entity? Yes, not for the registered agent. The registered agent is the law firm, the, uh, the business. The business. Okay, got it. And just to understand, if there are five times within 30 days that the business operates in Davidson County, they, are, they must have a permit to operate. And they're here to applying for the permit. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's like kind of a moot question. Isn't it? If it's more than five times, it is. But if they've moved into Williamson County, that's... Then we wouldn't regulate them. We wouldn't That's them not our jurisdiction. Right, but they're presenting they themselves are, for... Yeah, if they are operating within Davidson County, even if their business location is in right. County, it would right. still be under our regulation. Right. And, and, right, and for me, that's important because, you know, if somebody's in Nashville, car breaks down, they come pick them up in Nashville, take them back to Williamson County, or if, you know, break down in Williamson County and got to go back to Nashville, you know, and you do that five times in 30 days, you're subject to our jurisdiction, which is would be com comport with like minimum contacts and different things and different, you know, due process kind of consideration. All right, well, that, I'm pretty satisfied with understanding that, I think. And, and I've only got a couple of questions. What, what happened to the company that was denied last year? Is that out of business? Is it, no, is it in existence anymore? It's still in existence. We just have an additional company that we are now running. Is that company operated within Davidge County? Like the one, and you're the president of both? I am the president of both. That other company is in an appeal process this upcoming month. And, and you haven't operated in the prior since last year? That other company is irrelevant to, to, to today's meeting. It's, no. This is for Priority Record Service of Tennessee. Excuse me. Um, we may, if he's testifying, we may want to go ahead and put him under oath. <laughs> Can you uh, repeat that for me? I swear or affirm that, that the <coughs> testimony that I'm about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I swear and I affirm that the testimony I'm about to give is the truth and, and the whole truth. The whole truth and nothing, nothing but, but the, truth. the truth. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. I only have one other question. Do, have either of these companies received any citations? Have, have you received a citation? As the owner of a company working as record company, have you received any citations from any law enforcement? Could you, uh, legals ask, would you go back and answer the, the previous question about the, the status of the company which well, applied last year? That his previous answer was accurate. Right. Okay, I will testify that my previous answer was accurate, but I do have two companies. One's Priority Record Service of Tennessee, and one is Priority Record Service Inc. And you own them both? I do. Have there been any, have you had any citations or for either company in the last year? In the last year? For Tennessee, for Priority Record Service of Tennessee, no. Priority Record Service of Tennessee, Inc., I am unsure. What, why are you unsure? I'm not sure if there's some outstanding citations we never received. But that company is totally separate from this company here today that we're on behalf of. And so uh, if you already own a record service company, why are you applying for a new application? Or an application under a different company? We were per, we were denied in our previous application for our other company, and now we have another company that's outside of this that's going to be doing business within Davidson County, or going in and out of, picking up within to take out of, or take, picking up out of it to take in, and we want to make sure we're following the law. With respect to the two companies that you have, um, can you describe the differences in their operations from personnel, vehicles? Totally separate. Uh, different locations for storage of units? Yes, sir. Different drivers? Yes, sir. Um, is the 
is there is the other company at 7009 West Belt Drive in Davidson County? Yes. Is it, uh, it's the company that was denied. Is it operating today? We operate, yes. In Davidson mm -hmm. County? I, I don't know. I'm not sure of those answers today. Do you have any cars impounded there? We do not. Do you ever impound cars there? We're here today on behalf of Priority Record Service of Tennessee. I'm not Just here for the other company. Question. I understand. I'm answering it. But you understand that as the owner of this other company, right, which we previously denied, uh, you know, the application for that this is relevant information. Right okay. Now. So do we impound vehicles there? On occasion, it could happen. That's part of our business. And, and storage, I don't, eight pounds, actually, uh, storage, I guess, is a better question. Will we store vehicles? If somebody's needing to be stored, yes. Ms. Costones, just as a legal point, could I ask, and I say this only because I own three different companies, um, as, a, as a legal standpoint, are we able to cross the two if he is here with two separate companies that have two separate addresses and separate employees, are we actually able to conjoin the two? So first I will say that the, um, the Nashville address was for the most recent active company. Second, I will say, um, I think you're correct, or, or the commissioner um, was correct, um, Santa Stefan, because um, uh, one of the provisions that you all are supposed to look at in determining whether to grant someone a new certificate is their character and their ability to conform their behavior to the law. Um, if you have a company, the ownership of which is identical, his role as owner and his role as owner in a past company which did not conform itself to the law, I think would be relevant. Can do we know the reasons that he was denied his other company's reapplication? I do. <laughs> it was uh, it was due to uh, operating within Davidson County without the permit. Uh, he had stated previously that uh, he was from another state and did not realize that there were uh, certain permits that he needed to get within Davidson County and that when he did that uh, he did what he needed what what he needed to do to be compliant when he came to us that time I believe he did have insurance and other things in place the problem was there were incidences of uh, still operating when we had uh, said we need to review this before you do any more operation and as my memory serves me I think he said that he didn't have knowledge that his drivers were doing that or it might have happened one time. Um, I don't think the issue was compliance as far as insurance or the trucks, which I've seen their trucks on the road. So I'm in the trucking business. I've seen their trucks on the road. Beautiful trucks, decked to the nines. Uh, they're all painted nice and lit up and all that stuff. But I think the issue was... Um, more along the lines of guidelines we had given that we felt that weren't being followed. And you could correct me, Mr. Fields, if I'm wrong. That's my general recollection. And then can I comment on that once? I thought we were going to talk about that one. Before, sure. you, before sure. you do, if I may. Sure. Yeah. So we're not talking about any type of, like, um, traffic ordinance violations, any type of issues with drivers, like substance issues, any type of, like, safety precautions. We're talking about the fact that uh, they were meant to be permitted. They were not permitted. When they applied for their permit, their past non-compliance with the permitting requirements disabled them from being permitted. They were denied twice last year. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. I'm sorry, sir. Please You're proceed. Okay. When we were denied before with the other companies we're talking about, it was for one instance. And within the ordinance, it allows five. So at that point, I feel like it was overlooked in a portion where we should have been given a chance because we only did it one time. And we've done everything we can to now start this other company to try to do right. And this this other company's had no operations in Davidson County. Seldom. Uh, uh, with, uh, within the, within the, the statutory allowance. And what happened was when I formed it, I set the addresses, the West Belt Drive address, but it's been 
in the process of being changed to Franklin, Tennessee. Okay. I live in Franklin, Tennessee as well. Has it officially been changed or it's in the process of being changed? It's in process with the Secretary of State to make the address change, but we do reside there. We have a lease there. We have everything in line there. That's your principal place of business? At the principal place of business, okay. yes. And the truck is registered there. Okay. Do you, do we have anything, did you, do you guys bring, did, did you happen to bring like copy of your lease maybe or, or anything that we could I didn't, but um, on our insurance, guys are there? maybe on our insurance. It's on your insurance? Yeah, insurance. Listed as right. Okay. Great. Because we can have multiple locations. Anybody can have multiple locations. You know. So we did it properly. I would still suggest to request additional records from the company for the last. If we if we can't do the other company out, at last request request information from the new company since they began operations. Can you speak, Mr. Fields, to the? Um, request that NDOT has rel at the, I guess, at the end of our agenda uh, relative to the other business. Um, yeah. Defer back to legal on information on that. So um, the Metropolitan Charter has a provision at Section 1810 thereof that allows um, the Council, the Civil Service Commission, the Board of Education, and every other officer and agency of the Metropolitan Government authorized to conduct investigations or to hold hearings shall have the power to compel the attendance of witnesses and the production of book papers and records pertinent to the investigation or hearing and to administer oaths to witnesses. If any person fails or refuses to obey a reasonable order for attendance or a reasonable order for the production of books and papers, the council board or other agency is authorized to apply to the chancery court for an order requiring that the order of the council board and other agency be obeyed. So, Basically, what that means is if you vote to do so, you have the authority to issue a subpoena for documents and records. Um, and we are recommending that you do that um, in order to obtain um, more information about the operations of the companies. And if I may just make a point on that, um, we respectfully disagree with this request for subpoena. Just want to note there are two new applic applicants today um, other than us, and there's no request for them to be subpoenaed for records. Uh, the commission, if they were to go forward with this, we feel that they would be singling out one entity um, on a technical issue of whether there was a premature operation or not. Um, and if you choose to go forward with the subpoena, you know, then this body should also issue a subpoena for all applicants including the two that are here today. We're asking that you apply this in an equitable way and require that all applicants produce their records rather than singling out my client. Mr. Mr. Fields, could you speak to the, the information we're requesting additionally? Certainly. The other two companies, to my knowledge, have not, I have no information that would indicate a reason to request information because I have no basis to believe they have operated. Could they have? Certainly. In his particular case, I've actually, I mean, we've had reports that he is operating Davidson County. Uh, now we have a different issue that I was not aware of until today that there are two different companies. So now I'm not sure which company could have operated. So now at this point, I need additional information. Go back and see what the information, what has been provided. Was it accurate or not? I just, I can't answer what today was different than our application date excuse me what happened today that was different on our application when we applied for this month's uh, agenda no difference i just reviewed it like i did everything else and and what does it say on the application for the name i'm not sure how to respond i respond to the committee yeah thank you thank you i, I don't know if that's necessarily helpful okay both for our information gathering or to your application. Um, what I would say is, is, and help me if, I'm just gonna say here, I think the additional information that you're looking for are dates of operation of the, the new company, the pickups, drop-offs, et cetera, that would provide that information. You're asking that we subpoena, that we vote to subpoena that information. For both companies. For both companies in order to confirm and verify those dates of operation in inside our jurisdiction or not that's that's what we're looking for is just if he, if he's if he's complying he's complying 
Okay. Just so I'm clear, the two companies is their Priority Record Services Inc. and Priority Record Services of Tennessee Inc. and Priority Record Services Inc. was previously turned down, or is it Record Services of Tennessee? Which one was turned down previously? Inc. So this is not one a one without Tennessee in it. This is not a reapplication. This is a new application. Uh, it so it's classified. To be now. Yeah. It's classified incorrectly on our, agenda, on our agenda as a reapplication instead of a new application. So, Mr. Fields, given that this is a new application, do you feel that you need time to review? Uh, what, what's been the only on. issue that's out there is he's uh, of his own testimony operated a company that you denied twice as the president he's now said that he's started a new company he's the president of this company and so the previous company was denied twice this company hasn't been heard i just want to make sure the commission's aware of that and that was based on legal advice now, i mean today especially now that we've just figured this part out. I mean, I don't want to, I, mean, I just want to make sure we do it properly on our end as well, and that you have the information you need to make decisions you need to make. Have you reviewed the documentation for the new company? I don't, I just got the application. The application is, it's fine. So, I, again, and I, and I just, and, and I just want to walk the line here legally too, since we're, um, so this is a new application and not a reapplication. And as far as the new application is concerned, separating the Siamese twins here, if you were only to see this application, would it, would it be fine? legal advises me that at the present time the insurance is actually in the name of the old company rather than the new company so it would not be fine it would have to have additional information from that so so the the insurance is non-compliant so it would not it would be in the name of the other company apparently the insurance is compliant. Um, it is a paperwork error that the client has stated that he will get fixed immediately. The vehicle is properly insured. So the insurance that's in the, in the handout or the, or the packet that we have as commissioners it says priority record set versus Inc., which is in and, and addresses in Franklin, Tennessee. But I thought I heard that Inc. was operating in the Nashville address. Correct, sir. So the name was should have been priority record service of Tennessee Inc. in the application. Yes, sir. Tennessee should be in the same insurance company. Yeah, I, I think it may be premature to consider <laughs> this application until we get more information and the names of the company and all of the records are consistent um, and put forth through uh, the process. Like, yeah, I'm sympathetic with your, your situation. I, I think, you know, it, it's commendable to, to make sure you're going back the right channels and getting permitted. You know, I want to make sure we state that. Um, the insurance does have to be in the proper name of the company. The one that accompanies this application doesn't appear that it's correct. So, you know, I think the proper, I agree uh, with, with Mr. Uh, Steve. Santa Steve. I'm sorry, bro. I'll be trying to say it, but I just, <laughs> I was going to butcher it. Santa, with Commissioner Santa Steven in that, putting that combined packet together uh, will work. And, and, you know, we're going to vote on this subpoena, but I mean, to the extent you can voluntarily provide information regarding that previous company to clear up the permit on that, that would, I think, alleviate the need for any type of quashing action, any type of situation moving forward there, right? Wait, on the previous company? Yeah, I mean, because the application was denied twice, right, because of the, the noncompliance with 
not being permitted but operating. But you, but you've got your second company here. The, the error in this application appears to be that the insurance mm -hmm. isn't in the, this new company's name, though the address does show that you're in Williamson County. So your, your, your statement that, you know, that's a clerical error rings true to me, right? So it would seem to me that the, the remedy would be submit, resubmit, re, get the insurance corrected, resubmit the application, and continue being in compliance, and you, I mean, I can't see what would prevent you from getting the permit at that point. But I'm the baby commissioner. So. I understand. Maybe one other piece with that, the vehicle registration is Priority Record Services, Inc., yeah, as well. So the, the, the vehicle's not registered to the proper company that's on the new application, nor is the insurance correct. I'm curious, who owns the vehicle? It is Priority Record Service of Tennessee, Inc. Of Tennessee. It must, must have been because of the insurance certificate that was provided. When you go to get license plates, you have to prove insurance. They must have typed it in incorrectly when they were doing that. Did you sell the vehicle from one company to the other? No, it's never been registered to anybody else but Priority Record Service of Tennessee. So why does it say Priority Record Services, Inc.? That's what I'm saying. So on the insurance certificate, it's provided when we go to get license plates on our vehicles. On your vehicle, actual, on your vehicle the, registration. When we go to do the vehicle registration, we prove proof of insurance to get license plates for the vehicle. You would have a title. Yeah, there's a title, the, and then there's the insurance certificate, and then the registration paperwork. So the clerk, whoever did the registration paperwork, as you're saying, must have done it incorrectly, meaning that they forgot to put of Tennessee. Clerical error can be changed pretty simply. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's no different than if, if this gentleman with... The uh, slow moving vehicles, you know, gets approved, he gets his insurance protected. I, I think so. Let me, if, if I could just make some clarification. So, what you're saying is the title to the truck does say, at, with the addition of priority records of Tennessee, Correct. Has, never, has never been titled to Priority Record Inc. Correct. In presenting that to the clerk, the clerk made the clerical error, not you. Correct. Because okay. of the insurance. Information that was and it's and just Mr. Rella for, from from your statement, are you seeking a permit for priority records of Tennessee and priority records to both be able to operate or just the one? Today we're here for priority record service of Tennessee. We are currently in a, at a court appeal for priority record service. Okay. Inc. Yeah, I remember you saying that. Okay. Is there a motion? And I'll have one other question. You are the president and the owner of both companies, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Sole owner? Sole owner. Okay. And the signatory on behalf of the applicant? Mm -hmm. And the signatory on behalf of the applicant? And, and you did sign the application, correct? I did. Okay. I uh, have no more. So I guess point of clarification, if we're not going to consider the application, do we need a motion on that, Ms. Casones? So you would need to defer the application until more information can be obtained. Uh, maybe they can rewrite the application in the correct way, although I think there is. What's the limitation on resubmitting applications, Mr. Fields? Do you know? As far as resubmitting it? Is there a period of time you have to wait, or is there? Only if there's a denial. Only if there's a denial. Okay, so if there's just a deferral, then there's not a denial. There's not a period of time to wait. So, um, uh, you know, um, Mr. Fields and I had also requested that you all authorize the issuance of the subpoena. Um, and, um, you know, I, obviously you don't have to consider anything that we recommend, but um, uh, if you would... Um, uh, consider doing so, um, uh, that might also provide additional relevant information. And um, finally, I would add that um, uh, the F Priority Wrecker Inc. company um, has does have a lawsuit pending where he actually um, appealed by writ of cert this panel's decision to um, uh, deny his prior company's permit. And so um, we don't think that has any bearing on what you can do here, but we just wanted to make you aware of that FYI. All right, another point of clarification, being a lawyer here, the, we're dealing with two separate legal entities, two separate applications. The subpoena, from my understanding, was meant to be issued to the 
company that was denied twice. Mm -hmm. um, so I had actually looked on the Secretary of State's website and um, in preparing the document and um, uh, saw that there was an inactive company and an active company. So I'd originally written it for the active company, which is Priority Record Services of Tennessee, Inc., but I have just modified it to include both because I think that would be most relevant to you all. With respect to this new company, do we have, I mean, do we have a reasonable suspicion of a violation to, to have the subpoena? Uh, and I would just, I'm, I'm seeing where you're going, Mr. Elba. Not wanting to be another chef in the soup, but kind of being in the seat anyway. <laughs> you, uh, we, uh, having heard the statement that we did not subpoena the other applicants, I, 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 I would not necessarily want to open that can of worms as to we, being that there's a lawsuit already there, that we singled them out uh, and, and are asking them, and we did not ask the other applicants. Fair enough. We can remove that. I mean, what I'm here's here's what I'm. Now I'm just speaking to the commissioners. Here's what I'm leaning. What I'm inclined to do, with respect to the 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 company that's been denied twice, I believe that the subpoena for information could be well taken there. With respect to this new company, I do recognize the separation of the two legal entities. To me, it's just a matter of providing the additional information that corrects the insurance on the application, that corrects the registration. I would move on, on this application that we defer consideration of the application until we receive that additional information and specifically needing the updated inf uh, insurance information, the updated registra vehicle registration, and the other deficiencies that have been noted here today. And that will give us all the information that we need to consider that application properly without needing to subpoena the new company. Now, with respect to the subpoena of the old company, um, you know, I'm, I'm wary because there's an active lawsuit there. I understand that. Um, but, you know, if, again, I would prefer you guys to voluntarily supply that information as opposed to us trying to compel you to provide that information, which is all the subpoena does. And, you know, I think that's a matter of whether or not on that first application that's been denied twice, there's cooperation to supply that information. And there it seems that there is not. Well, last year they, act, they, they voluntarily provided all the information. Should last year. All right. Well, I'm going to make a motion. Uh, I move that we defer consideration of the application of priority record of Tennessee Incorporated, the new company, unless there's confusion, um, until we receive additional information um, that brings the application into compliance, including but not limited to um, proper insurance, proper vehicle registration, and the other deficiencies that have been noted at this commission meeting today. Mr. Relaford, can I ask one thing? Sure. So in the previous times, as he was saying about the other company, it wasn't relevant to have that insurance document or registration for trucks until we got approved for a permit. Can we let that slide with an exemption this time to move forward and I can prove that we have this before a permit's issued? Um, Mr. Hayes? There's a motion on the table. I'm curious if there is a second. Is there now any additional discussion? I, so, again, I am, I am putting a little bit of my own business out here and that I, I am with you, Mr. Relaford, on, on the fact that I would think it would make Mr. Field's office and this commission more comfortable if the correct names 
were on the insurance and the application so that there would be no this is a new applicant not a reapplication and so i want to clarify that and that it uh, where we were initially reviewing this under a reapplication which was incorrect that's correct so this is a new application which totally separates this company from their old application and uh, again being that there's a lawsuit already pending with that i do not want to muddle the waters uh, so to speak here with the two and why we are considering or why we are not considering so uh, under the uh, for discussion under that motion i agree it would make things very crisp and clear and concise that this is the company we are dealing with this is their name this is where they are located this truck is titled to this it has nothing to do with this other company just so so those lines are drawn and i i would i would very much feel more at ease uh in dealing with that application that way uh what's going on with the other company i, I i'm i'm not even going to comment because there is a lawsuit pending so um I, I just i just think for clarification purposes those things do need to be done as far as separating the two and making that a lot easier and more clear for us to deal with all right that being said when we if that goes that direction this is not a oh i'm sorry yeah, but yeah. There, we're, we're in the middle of the discussion there's been a motion properly yeah. uh presented and seconded is there any other discussion within the committee no, no. call for no. question Oh, thank Jordan. you. <laughs> you want me to do you? Want me to do? <laughs> Please. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? All right. I said aye too, by the way. <laughs> All right, cool. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, I believe we are about to lose uh, Mr. Elliford. Yeah, I can, I can push it like hey. 12 more minutes. I know we got some driver applications and stuff. Yeah, like is, there, is there, I don't want to. Is there any, anybody here that we can consider? Yeah. That, that, the uh, the consent agendas you wouldn't be able to go ahead and consider those for certain. Uh, the drivers will require. I mean, Mr. We, Mr. Rooker can read to you what we've got for the straight up consent agenda if you'd like. Yes, yes. please. Uh, okay. Well, first of all, a review of Entertainment Transportation Company, uh, Nashville Bar Bus LLC, address two eight zero one, Representative John Lewis Way. I want to take these all at once or you want them one at a time? All at oh, once. Well, okay. Yeah. Uh, review Entertainment Transportation Company change of name from Nashville Party Trucks to Yeehaw Party Bus. Uh, review name change request to modify OPVH Company Kairos Limo to Kairos Service Max LLC. And review uh, name change request to modify OPVH Company Carroll Transportation Services LLC to ride with a GI. I make a motion to approve all names that were uh, listed by Mr. Rucker. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Motion passes. Could we go with the OPBA? <laughs> I, think, I think we can dispense with the rest of the agenda. I've got a plan. If you go. Okay. <laughs> we're going to review, uh, review new OPVH company uh, application. Uh, for the record, Seven Star Limousine, All Boutique, All Boutique Transportation LLC, BA Limousine Company, uh, Coach Enterprise LLC, doing business as Jamboree ex um, Executive Car Service, Jubilee. Jubilee. Sorry, my fault. Um, Eleven Eleven Logistics LLC, Empire Limo Service Incorporated, Hilton Logistics LLC, Jude luxury service car um max tour gg llc nashville vegas limousine llc um how would you pronounce that uh, yeah for the uh, company well, llc yeah, puerto. Puerto. puerto sorry puerto luxury llc uh, ride with wyatt uh round round the bend chauffeur San Joe, San Joe Transportation, Smooth Limo, Tano LLC, and Tennessee Transportation Services Incorporated doing business as Luxury Transportation Services. I move. Information and applications in order. In order. 
Seconded. Any discussion? Actually, I can let me make two suggestions. We have two record companies that have applied, as I indicated earlier when I was asked. We have no information other than the application in terms of have they, uh, which to our knowledge, they've all been compliant with the local laws and no violations. Those companies are Ray Towing, Safeway Automotive Towing. They're, they're, they're compliant and we'd suggest, we recommend approval. Well, well, no, can we can we go ahead? We've got a motion and we've got a second to review the new OPVH company applications for hire. Uh, motion, second. There's no discussion on that topic? No. All in, uh, all in favor? Aye. Uh, motion passes. I, I apologize, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we, now, back, back, yeah, yeah. <laughs> back to working through our agenda. We've got still on the, on the agenda the review of the new general company applications for Ray Towing and Safeway Automotive Towing, which is what you which were just referring just to. to. Um, and you stated that we only have the applications, but the applicants are not here, or are they here? Do we have representatives from Ray Towing or Safeway Automotive? We typically have not required them to be here. We certainly could in the future. Mm -hmm. if that, and that may be, we'll talk about that. I would say if, there, if you haven't found anything that they're non-compliant to, I wouldn't see a reason that we just need to talk to them. Yeah. No, no, no reports from enforcement, no reports from the Metropolitan Police Department, no public comments or problems that we're aware of. I make a motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Mr. And Mr. Chairman, we have two drivers. Uh, Mr. Owens, are you present? Mr. Witherstein, are you present? We would suggest that we uh, defer action on those applications. Oh, are you present? No, I have a driver application concerning about nine weeks ago. I'm also a chauffeur. What is your name, sir? Larry Carter. It's not on the agenda today. If you had a, let me, we'll talk after the meeting. It's not on the agenda. So we can just defer it till, till they're present or deny it's your option. Make a motion to defer until they're present. Seconded. Any discussion? None for me. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody want to, anybody want to make a motion to close the meeting? I'd like to move to close the meeting. It's been a good meeting. I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you all. This has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again or for more information on this and other programs, visit Nashville.gov.